Keltec is a proud sponsor of the Talking Lead Podcast and the Leadhead Brigade. Parker, you want to see my new tattoo? <laughs> oh, it's so realistic. I know. So, so this is not a good time to talk about you and I getting BMW bikes and going to Sturgis. Well, as soon as I can lift my arm up and ride, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing the show in bar. Yeah. It's not a bar. It's, uh, uh, it's like a, that's like, like a coffee shop. Talking coffee with talking lid. You loose? You ready to go? All right, all right, all right, lead heads. Welcome back to another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. I'm your host Lefty, where we have been educating the uneducated here at Talking Lead for ten years. Since 2012, we have been bringing you all the firearms, inside news, all the goodness, all the people, all the events, uh, and then all the things outside the industry, too, that tie in and, and make us one of the most diverse, welcoming industries that there is. And on this episode, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you know, we went to NRA. It was a great event. And we are in the process of releasing all those interviews. This is going to be round two of our NRA uh, interviews. And to help us kick this episode off, we have brought in sponsors of the Talking Lead podcast and friends of the show for almost the, our entirety of the 10 years. Uh, we have got Parker Rosenberger, ladies and gentlemen, joining us. Is this your first time on, Parker? And this is the first time being on. So newbie, new guy, new guy, new guy. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, the old hat at this. Uh, he might as well be my co-host, ladies and gentlemen. We've got none other than Evil Chenevil, Crash himself, <laughs> Chad Enos. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We are glad Welcome to have back. you, Chad. What's that? I said, we are glad to have you. We are glad that you have uh, are on the road to recovery. That's good to be had. Number three, is this your third recovery? Oh. It is, yeah. Yeah, still yeah. wearing the bandages. You've got one on your finger there. That's probably yeah, not related to your, your accident, is it? It is. They had to reconstruct my index, my trigger finger. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but they had put a little so. extension on there? be off the range for a little while uh now yeah i split it down the middle all the way to the first knuckle so it was Ooh. pretty much blown up and they had to reconstruct it yeah they didn't have to take other body parts and and make it no there was enough there was still enough uh meat in there to <laughs> sew it back together so enough meat thanks like that yeah when i went in they told me they were gonna have to amputate um down to my first knuckle and I was uh I I said no it's not I I, I need that like, <laughs> I need yeah, that's that for the trigger that's the part that's on the trigger <laughs> so but he came back after the surgery and everything I was all buttoned up and he's like yeah we always just tell everybody the worst case scenario he's like well I was gonna I figured, say you know you, I figured I could save it but I had to tell you the worst case scenario just in case you know we ever look something other body parts that you could have uh, borrowed from you know that you've got enough uh, extra down that you could have, you know, put that on your finger. Oh, it's got tons of extra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking about your earlobe, but all right. Yeah. I can be earlobes. <laughs> so, Parker, this is the talking lead. This is our real show. You've not had the experience of our, yeah, our real fun. show. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I love it. I love it. This is what happens uh, during the green show. So welcome in Parker. <laughs> We're glad to have you. No, thank you. No, I'm thrilled to be here. And as as usual, we've got Matt somewhere in the background listening to us. So, Matt, welcome in. Matt's just Thanks waving. He's waving. He's not even on camera. He's waving. <laughs> he, he said thank you for acknowledging. Absolutely. I mean, Matt's my boy. I just wish I just wish you guys so bashful. Any love, right? I know it. I know it. So, I mean, he's he's one of the guys that helped make it possible, Parker. You and Matt and, and Chad made it possible for the Talking Lead studio to be set up again and uh, broadcast all this goodness, bring everybody all the news from NRA. 
And I know our lead heads greatly appreciate that. So thank you guys for making it possible again, being the official lead quarters of the NRA 2023. Always welcome, as long as the budget. And it's always awesome. great. <laughs> you bring a big crowd, Marty. You bring a huge crowd, so it's always fun. Well, the Leadheads are a fun group, and they uh, when they can make it out, you know, they come out in force. So, and I, I know think that Marty love... not only brings a big crowd, he brings a quality crowd. He brings he brings really cool people to the booth. <clears throat> That's all I know, man. I don't know anybody else but cool people. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's it's hard to really find somebody who's not cool in this industry. It's just this industry is full of of great personalities, great people. You know, you get the occasional one or two that are you're not so, but they don't last very long, do they? That's true. No. That's very true. But, yes, it was uh, another bustling um, event, a show, and we had lots of interviews. So in this episode, uh, we're going to be bringing you – I've got it written down here because we've got so much. We've got David Foster from Fostech. It's going to be on talking about – uh, they make cool ARs, AR accessories, and they're they're lightweight. So they make them out of that aluminum magnesium alloy mixture. Uh, mm. So we have David on to talk about uh, Fostec and their products. We get Patriot Rich. I know that a lot of you leadheads are probably following Patriot Rich on the the Instagrams. He's got a huge following, and uh, he was there representing JK Armament, telling us about all their latest and greatest in the silencer world. So I told you guys in the first episode that we've got a lot of silencer companies that we interviewed during NRA. I don't know if that happened to be because we were right there on silencer row <laughs> and they were all right. There were there. a lot of them there. There were, there were a lot of silencer companies there. Um, so big rich comes on, talks about uh, JK armament. And uh, we talk about a lot of things with big rich. So that, that was a, uh, probably the longer of the, interviews that you're going to get on here went almost an hour with him and then uh paul markle was student of the gun jeff gonzalez former navy seal and marco vorbiv former spetsnaz and uh frequent guest on the talking lead ak corner you guys know marco uh, and he was there and we were letting you guys know that if you had a copy of his ak book the ak-47 uh, survival and evolution of the world's most prolific rifle that he would autograph that or any of his books. He's written a couple of books. You could have come by and got an autograph. He didn't actually have them there. He wasn't selling them or, or anything like that, but he just made himself available. Uh, so great conversation with Paul Markle and got to give a big shout out to the guys at student of the gun because they made the video portion that we did the live streaming and all that possible um, they set up their their cameras and, and software, and they were showing me how to do that so that I can start doing that for uh, future events. So really appreciate Paul and uh, Jared and the Shipping Ogre coming by and sharing their equipment. And we've got some like co-interviews that we did with, with Paul and Student of the Gun. So we're going to be dropping those as well. And you can go to his channel, Student of the Gun, and um, they're posting those interviews on their channel, too. And I know a lot of you guys listen to both, so uh, make sure you're uh, checking those out at Student of the Gun, too. Uh, so that's our lineup for this episode. Uh, if you didn't get an opportunity, make sure you go back to the first uh, release that we did. And uh, we had some great interviews there with... Um, we had uh, the guys from Bursa, had Rafael Mariana talking about their new AR that they uh, have released. So Bursa has a rifle, an AR rifle, and they've got pistols too. they got two, two, three, three hundred 300 blackout, and they've got a 9 millimeter that they released. So we have them on talking about that. We've got Tim with Tactical Walls, who was kind of a co-tandem booth sharer. You guys allowed him to, to tag onto your booth there. That was awesome of you guys to let Tim uh, make, an, uh, make an appearance. They're kind of getting back into the the circuit with the events and, and showing their products off there. Uh, they have been longtime uh, friends of the show, the concealment furniture. So he's talking about new concealment furniture that they've got. Auburn with Huxworks, we had him on, the uh, silencer cool. company again. So uh, go back, make sure you guys listen to that episode. It was uh, very good, very informational. 
And this show is going to be just as, as fun and informational. And we want to talk about what we did there at the booth at Caltech during NRA. We did a giveaway. We had, a, had an awesome giveaway, and it was just for people who attended the show. And uh, you want to talk about the, the giveaway that we did, Parker? Yeah, so we had a, our P-17 with our slide, updated slide and red dot uh, combination. We had a awesome rounded holster included with there. Um, it's a, it's a heck of a setup. So I was, I mean, the response for it at NRA was, uh, was off the charts. So we're looking forward to announcing that winner with you guys. And then we also had the Kraken case. It's, it came with a, a gamma case. Oh yeah. And we had like a tan theme going. So we had a tan case. It was a tan, uh, P17 with a crimson trace red dot and that, uh, rounded gear custom holster that they had made for it too so and then also i think there was a, one of your flashlights in there too chad yes, uh, cr43 yeah yeah the cr43 yep. was included with yeah. that and extra mags you get like four or five extra mags something like that with it too so it's a pretty significant giveaway i'm kind of jealous i didn't win well <laughs> you had to be present and you weren't there <laughs> <laughs> i know i got so many people on uh, social media asking me how um how to win like where do they go online to win or whatever and and it said right in the hey, i'm not bashing people because people just see the word giveaway and they get all excited yeah. they don't read the the actual text that's at the top but i had our booth number and everything on there um but it was just hilarious to see just how scrolling through to see how many people were asking me how they could win that setup yeah he's Pretty like cool. hey make a trip back in time to, to NRA, go to the booth and sign up. And you still it created have a lot of excitement. No, this is before the show even. Oh, even before the show. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 Well, we were so. kind of torn because we were going to, we were, we were thinking of a way where we could make people who weren't there a part of it as well. And we came up with a solution for that. So it wasn't mm -hmm. this, this giveaway, but this giveaway, you had to be there. You had to register, come by the booth. And I think we had over a thousand people, uh, that registered for that. So, um, wow. it, it had wow. you know, really good response. And if you were there and you took part and you're listening to this right now, you're like, okay, when are we going to find out who won? Well, that's coming. And you guys have a newsletter that you put out. Um, it's, it's in addition to your newsletter. So if you signed up there, I guess you guys probably automatically signed them up for the newsletter too. Is that, you want to talk about that? Yeah, I believe we did have it set up there where you can sign up for the Caltech Insider, and then we'll kick uh, we'll kick out an email that'll go directly to your inbox uh, when right. we announce the winner on what's going on. And that's going to be May tenth. So that's coming up. That's right. So as we were recording, this is this is uh, May the fourth. So May the fourth be with you. This is the big Star Wars <laughs> day, guys. <laughs> I just realized yeah, that's that. right. <laughs> So may the fourth be with you, Leadheads. <laughs> this is awesome. This show is actually going to be released. What is the uh, six, seven, eight? It, almost, I think the ninth is Monday the ninth. Mm, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when this show is going to be Maybe released. So as you're listening to this, Leadheads, we're recording Tuesday. on the fourth. That's Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. So, so Tuesday's May the tenth. Is that right? No, Wednesday's May 10th. Wednesday's May the 10th. Okay, so this show right. will be released on the 9th. Tuesday the 9th, that's what I said. It all runs together. Yeah. Listen to your co-host, all right? Listen to Chad. He knows what's going on. <laughs> Even though he's on meds, he knows what's going on. <laughs> so you're going to find out May the 10th, whenever that is, uh, who the winner is. So be look, looking at your email. You're going to get an email from Caltech. And if you are a listener and you haven't signed up for their newsletter, how can they do that? Uh, our website, caltechweapons.com. Scroll, yep, yeah, go to caltechweapons.com. Scroll down to the bottom and and uh, just follow the uh, follow the links. Follow the instructions on how to sign up for that. And in your newsletter, yeah. is that a monthly or how often does that go out? Uh, Matt, what is that? Uh, twice a month. Okay, so buy yep. monthly. Get a, yes, a buy monthly newsletter there. So they're not going to inundate you with like three or four a day, like you get from <laughs> from some companies. 
Uh, no. The Caltech Insider is um, pretty full of, of information. Um, uh, some of it or most of it's entertaining. So there you go. Yeah, it's fun. We you know try to keep it fun. It's not just you know bashing you over the head with products and stuff like that. We, we've got, got blogs useful on, information in there. And you yeah. guys have a blog on uh, on your website too, don't you? You put some Correct. some fun information yep. on there too. I've read that a few times. <clears throat> nice. So I try to get one. you guys to do like a little so you're like <laughs> a little monthly segment uh, where we we do your blog. We talk about your blog. So what's on this month's yeah, blog? Yeah, we could definitely do that. Um, I don't know. I haven't been here, so let me look at. That's it. Chad's been out of the out of the game for a bit. So while you're looking that up, or maybe Matt's looking it up for you, uh, NRA. No, go ahead. I basically write these blogs, and then I don't ever really revisit them. <laughs> um, you just do a someone asks information it, dump I mean, and then move on. Hey, once it's proofed and it's on the website, it's for everyone else. It's no longer for me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you disassociate uh, yourself from it. Yeah, yeah, we can jump on, and uh, I'd love to jump on and go through these uh, blogs uh, once a month or something with you. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, I think we should do that. Let's do like a like all, we, we could do like quarterly or something like that. That way we could do a bunch at a time. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. Uh, they're um, they're generally just um, informative, educational, but I try to make it fun. Like I, you know, every time I I'm involved with copy or anything, I, you know, if I can't add some humor to it, then it just gets boring for me. So yeah, Did you put anything about yeah, motorcycle but, safety in there? What's that? <laughs> that could be our next one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you best, have survived three, three pretty heinous motorcycle accidents. So, I mean, you should know quite a bit about safety. You've survived them all. I'll tell you the, the best. <laughs> how, did, how did I survive three crashes? The best way to uh, avoid motorcycle crashes is don't ride one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch somebody else ride. Yeah. Three and three years, I'm done. I'm good. You say the thing that though, Marty, is that I is Chad had me popped up to go get a bike and ride with him, like right before this happened. So I was like, "Yeah, yeah well, we, I, I may have to pause that." Me too. I, ever <laughs> yeah. since Sturgis, I've been looking for a bike. So I was like, "Yeah, well, next trip to Sturgis, I'm going to have a bike." I just need to let everybody know uh, because I, I kept, you know, I made a post about my injuries and stuff, and. <clears throat> Everybody and the brother jumped in on there, and they were bashing, you know, drivers, you know, car drivers, cage. They call them cagers, um, and uh, you know, asking me what happened. And um, to be honest, um, that is somewhat true. But I've been avoiding people on the road my whole life, um, and I haven't been actually. It's never been a dri another driver's fault, uh, except for the except for one. Number two, well, and. Uh, well, no, the, the first one was another driver that hit me, but the, the accident was my fault. Um, the second time I got hit, I got, I just, it, that was just a completely freak accident. I got rear ended in the middle of the night um, on a four lane highway by a drunk driver. And I actually didn't suffer any injuries from that accident. And she hit me at 40 or 50 miles an hour from behind. And wow. I just flipped over the car and landed in the street in my back. And thank God, nothing. It wasn't serious, and I actually stood up and I I just went home <laughs> from that accident. Uh, and then this one was 100% my fault too. So uh, take all that into consideration if you're gonna ride. Um, just don't be as reckless as I am. <laughs> rowdy, you know, ride ride smart, you know. That so. Chad is one rowdy mf'er. <laughs> mf'er, we mean mission first tacticaler mf'er. <laughs> nice. I nice. love. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I like that. That's one of Mission First uh, uh, taglines there. Which they were also that's at NRA, and uh, they were debuting another new product, uh, which is the. It's a multiple. I got it right here. A multi mount platform. Have you guys seen this yet? I'm not. So I'm going to screen no. share this. And let you see this. So there's the belly band holster. They they did that at uh, at Shot Show, 
this is the multi-mount platform. So this will attach to basically any holster or kit or gear. And then it gives you the ability to mount that on any surface. So it's got a 3M side or uh, attachment and it's got a Velcro attachment. So you got I need one of them. med gear, you've got flashlight, mace. You want to mount this in your car, have it at the ready. Then uh, you can That's either cool. do Velcro or you can do 3M. And uh, or if the, you're That's in the shower, cool. or you want to mount your gun in your shower. You know, I was talking about this. <laughs> gives, gives you a great opportunity to to put your your gun or your mace. We in laugh, shower. but I we all know we all have gun uh, shower guns. Right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just a uh, cool. You know, just something is like, ah, that's just something I never would have thought of, but something that I need in my life. You know, that, that's that got multiple uses. So go check it out. I have a very specific use for that, and I, I need to get one. And where and, would you uh, put that? So I have a, I've got a, a concealed carry bag. Um, I don't typically recommend people carrying a bag, but sometimes you have to. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a quick, um, it's like a quick draw bag, but um, my pistol the way it is right now, uh, I had a, a holster in there and, and it was, I had, I didn't have it mounted very well. I just had some, I just went to Walmart, bought some cheap Velcro and tried to glue it in there or whatever. And it didn't, it just kept ripping out. Um, because the surface of the holster is not flat. Mm. So with a flat, it, it didn't, wasn't the Velcro didn't have enough surface space. Right. So the so holster this is your perfect out. solution for that, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, for, and then those bags a, nowadays, a lot of them have the Velcro on the inside. So, that it does. Fun. Yeah, it's got the Velcro on the inside. Uh, so I need the the other half of it to yeah. mount my holster in there uh, properly. So that's perfect yeah. for it. So, like the the Mission First Tactical bags, they've got bags now. They've got the Velcro on the inside. So, if you've got a Mission nice. First Tactical bag, you can you can put that inside one of those. They make, a, they make a sling bag. This one I have is a really small sling bag. It's like enough for your wallet, your keys, and like a small carry gun. Yeah. And it's a rip away, so you just you just grab it and pull. What's that? It's a merce. Yeah, a yeah, pretty purse. much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like having it. I've got uh, one, too. <laughs> it's down here in Florida, you know, and, you know, it gets hot up there, too, in the summer. Uh, you know, if you you got a T-shirt on, you can't necessarily... Or you could get sure. the Mission First Tactical belly band if that hot Florida weather, and you could. Uh, yeah. It's too know. hot down here for that. This is perfect. For, no, it's it's aerated. Uh huh. It's Anybody that aerated. has up in Florida or lives in Florida now in, in the summer, you know that like you want to take a layer of skin off. It gets so hot down here. Shh, shut up, Chad. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm pimping out the Mission First Tactical belly band. <laughs> shut up. You know what? I, you know what I put in that. I put uh, I put those gel packs in there with my gun. You could do that. You could do. That. There's, just, <laughs> there's administrative pockets, so you could put those ice gel packs in here to keep you cool. Perfect. That's perfect. You could put your flashlight, your knife. Of course, a P15 would fit perfect in this. It'd nice. Perfect. Yeah. Right. Keltec P15. Your uh, Let's try that out. say the CR the flashlight number again. I, I never can remember your flashlight. We have a CR forty two and a CR forty three. Yeah, they would fit. They would fit in here perfect. Yeah, the forty two would probably fit great in there. Yeah, and those knives you used to make would have fit in here too. Would have been nice. We still make those. It's just not much of a priority. Yeah, I like them. Yeah, I thought they were good knives. Yeah, me too. They're great knives. The blades are really good. Uh, this is the one I wish you would make again. That's the one we make. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, the bayonet yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Didn't you make one that was actually a bayonet and it fit like in a bayonet? Yeah, and it had a that. That's the same knife. It just had a bayonet attachment. Yeah, it had a different attachment on it. Yeah. This sucker is like super sharp. I love yeah. this knife. Those are those blades are made by Gerber and they're really they're high quality. Oh, Gerber make those? Okay. Yep. They did a good job. It's got your your trademark Gator grips on them. Yep. It's a good knife. Yep. I like it. Um, our our good friend uh, Garcia gave me that. Several oh, nice. Ago. Yeah, that's how I got that. Yeah. Speaking of which, Parker, we we got people love those knives, and I don't know if we can, if you can, you know, kick a Carl. I need to make. Blade. I need to. I need to make some magic happen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, they look. They would look right good. Now, um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting subs out the door. That's that's the that's the fastest thing right now. Moving out. Good. Yeah. So for t- to introduce Parker to you guys. Sorry. I mean, we we introduced his name, but we didn't really tell anybody what he does. And um, honestly, uh, for the most part, he's he's marketing's bulldog. Like. <laughs> We, I mean, <laughs> his job goes way beyond this, way beyond this. But one of his jobs is like, you know, we we need to get something done. Like when Matt and I are getting hassled, or the public's hassling me for something very specific. Like, how come I can't see this? How come I can't find that? Parker's the guy that makes it happen. Like, he's the one that satisfies the public. Um, he satisfies You're our very community. kind, Chad. <laughs> well, it's true. It's true. And uh, you know, again, we just showed the knives, so now people there's going to be a demand for the knives, and the guy that's going to make it Sorry. happen. <laughs> Give me Parker. So. Sorry, Parker. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Production's production's gonna love me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, when, so. when something's good, it's good. You know, you got to talk about. And uh, Parker right. Parker is also um, related uh, to the family, to the Kelgren family. So he's married into the Kelgren family. So he's uh, he's definitely a very important guy around here. So. Your son-in-law. Yeah. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> what is your official title, Parker? No, so I uh, so I'm the director of business development uh, for Caltech. I handle all global sales, distribution, uh, parts, accessories, and then whatever Matt and Chad need help with, they tap on my shoulder and I jump in and, and make it happen for them. So I wear wear a lot of different hats around around campus. Now you yeah. guys just uh, you went to the EWA. This is the first time Caltech has been to EWA, and I don't think we've actually talked about your trip trip there. So how, how I don't was it? That so, was, that's a whole nother man, podcast. Was awesome. Is that a whole yeah. other podcast? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's, right. that's a whole other episode. Yeah. Yeah. That's at least an hour's worth. Yeah. Yeah. This is supposed to be a pre-show, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, so short, no, that, was, short that was a heck of a show though. That was crazy cool. Yeah. Yeah. Let's definitely do a, we should do a little, a little something on that. It was okay. pretty amazing. Um, Parker was <laughs> the busiest guy in the building. <laughs> Because we don't have yeah, it was it was crazy. We didn't have um, European distribution. I mean, we do have we had some, and Parker can probably explain this a lot better. But we were looking for like a um, you know European distribution, kind of like what we have here in the states. Uh, states have always been a priority for us, um, but our company's gotten to a point where um, you know we feel like we need to uh, supply the demand over there um, the with world the products market. that they can yeah. legally uh, own of ours. So. Uh, Parker's working really hard to make that happen over there. So it was a very, very busy show. And um, it's the first time I'd ever been to Europe. And uh, Matt and I got a a 20, a 20 hour tour of London and we got to oh, nice. check out Nuremberg for a week. It was pretty amazing. So there's a lot of stories to tell. Very cool. I heard our, well, the, our, the best, I, I, no, getting ahead. the guns over there was getting the guns mostly yes. was quite the trick like yeah that would be a whole nother episode by itself <laughs> just getting the guns into germany it was right up to the last second i mean it was crazy we'll get 100 we'll get our buddy yeah. ton jones on for that episode because i understand that uh, he helped you guys out um with with a few of the logistics and things like that he's he's yeah, there's a lot much. Of, there's a lot of help from a lot of places we got a lot of help from everyone except for the people in europe <laughs> 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 That sounds yeah, typical, but, um, though, right? Yeah, Ton helped us out a lot, and uh, yeah, that's that'd be a really good episode. Actually, we have to get Matt on for that too. <clears throat> yeah, that'd be a good one. So we'll plan on maybe the next pre-show or one. We've got several episodes of of the NRA interviews, so uh, still coming up. Um, we've got Kevin Dixie, Chris Chang. We got Genesis Arms. Have you guys seen um, G- John Wick Four yet? Have you seen the John Wick Four? I, I, I have not yet. So no, I haven't. Either. So not to give it away, but there's a shotgun in there that uh, is pretty badass, and uh, Genesis Arms had a had a hand in that. So we've got them on. Uh, Fostech is this episode. We've got um, Carrie with uh, We the Female, Ron Holmes with Riker USA, which Riker they make this product that mounts onto your your rifle. And instead of like a vertical foregrip, uh, it it mounts oh, yeah. on the side, and it's just it's like a fist fits your, your palm. Huh. 
And then they've, they've evolved these to where they've got light attachments. So there's lights and lasers uh, that they've integrated with this system too. So we've got What long, is that called? Is it called the loophole? It is called the integrated <laughs> light control right-handed shooter, left-handed shooter mount. So I think That's it's a, just the Riker is what they call it, the Riker. It's so, really funny. I just came across his business card yesterday. I was looking through my business card stack. Ron Holmes, good. Yeah, he's a good dude. A, you should get in touch with it's him. It's a really old card, too. It's funny. Well, they've been around for a little while. Like I said, this is like the original product. I got this, I don't know, six, seven years ago. They were at the Big Three East event. Yeah. Uh, I yep. think that's where the first, first time we met him, and uh, they had it there. And then they've evolved to like these with the laser and the light uh, attachments. So very cool. So we got Ron on to talk about that uh, in an upcoming episode. Uh, Paul Glasgow with Legally Armed America. So we ran into Paul, had him on, uh, him and Laura Evans. Um, Andre Arvlosky, the heavyweight UFC champion. Wow, had, nice. Uh, Andre Arvlosky on. That's awesome. Uh, Isaac Dimrist, with, uh, he is with NRA. He's a board member of NRA, one of the newest board members. So we've got that interview with Isaac coming up. Uh, he gives some great insight on uh, the NRA and you know maybe what we can expect in the future. Uh, and lots more. Ackless Defense, Mike Myers um, with Eminem Industries, talking about their, their AKs. We've got C.J. Johnson with Pioneer Arms Corps, Marco, Lots and lots and lots uh, of interviews still to come. So, uh, Leadheads, we're going to go ahead and jump into these interviews now, and uh, we're going to catch you on the tail end of these with some more information from uh, Keltec and Talking Lead. Big news, so you're going to want to come back. The Kiltech KSG 410 is the perfect sidekick with no kick. At just over an inch and a half wide, just over 26 inches long, and just over 5 pounds, you'll be hard pressed to find a more impressive 410 bore shotgun. In fact, it's the world's first and only pump action 410 bore bullpup shotgun. The side by side dual feeding tubes and one in the chamber delivers an impressive 11 round total capacity, making it as functional as it is fun. Innovation, performance, Keltec. I think the first time we met was at, like you said earlier, was at uh, Eric's Range Day there yep. in Georgia. And Georgia. I've been yeah. going to that ever since the very beginning. I don't think I've missed I have one. too. I tell you what, we did miss one. Um, my business partner passed away and we couldn't make it. Well, last, that's a good excuse. Last year. I, I think but that's excusable. That, yes, yes, it was. That but. doesn't count. But yeah, we, uh, we went to the very first one. Yep. I was at the very first one and then went all the way nonstop until... A couple of years ago, I didn't go. I missed like that one where the big hurricane came and <laughs> knocked everybody's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were all staying in like six inches of water now. Yeah, there. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's one I'm not sorry that I missed. Yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't upset about that. Uh, but Leadheads joining me here at the uh, NRA annual convention here in Indy from the Caltech Lead Quarters <laughs> is David Foster with Fostech. Thank Welcome you. in, David. Well, thank you for having me. Well, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for your agents uh, bringing you yeah, over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going to call them your agents. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't say that too much. They're going to want me to pay them for that. <laughs> well, you know, you're getting your money's worth. Now. Yeah, no, yeah. they're good guys. They're making I, sure you get your money's worth. Absolutely. So uh, give our listeners, this is the first time you've been on the Talking Lead Podcast. Yes, sir. First time we've had anybody from Fostech on. Uh, talk about Fostech. Tell us a little bit about your company. What you do, how you got started? Uh, so we're a, we're a family-owned company here in Indiana. We're about an hour south here. In, oh, okay. Uh, right in Seymour, Indiana, uh, about 45 minutes or an hour south of here. Um, got started about uh, uh, 12, 13 years ago now. Okay. Started as a hobby. Me and my cousin, we uh, bought transferable machine guns, <laughs> and we were trying to figure out how to afford our ammo habit. Yeah. And so we thought we'd start getting into the gun business. And... Hobby turned crazy. So, lo and behold. Lo and behold. Hobby became the business. It did. So, Labor of love. Yeah. So he was a uh, he was a pharmaceutical sales rep. Okay. Um, I was a career firefighter at the time. Yeah. Um, and my other brother owned a machine shop. So my cousin had the sales 
side of things, being a pharmaceutical sales rep, my brother was a uh, had the, the experience in machining, and I just had a lot of crazy ideas. And you you had the looks. <laughs> Maybe I had the looks. I don't know, but I was the one that would kind of design and cat everything up. Yeah. My cousin would uh, my brother would figure out how to make a lot of it. Did you have like an engineering background? I went to college for aeronautical technology. Okay. Uh, but I was bored being behind a desk. So. Aerospace right yep. here? Yep. 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 Went to Purdue. I went to MTSU. Okay. In Murfreesboro. Awesome. Yep. Tennessee. So did you ever in, end up using any of that? Uh, I did for a short term. Yeah. How long was that? <laughs> oh, let's see. I was probably eight years maybe. Yeah. In the, the aerospace field. I worked at an FBO, a fixed base mm-hmm. operations. Yep. And... Uh, I started off pro pilot, and mm. then I switched to admin. Okay. And because I was like, why am I paying all this money to get flying lessons when I could just do this on my own? Right. So I was like, I might as well get learn something else. Yeah. <laughs> outside of this, so I switched to admin and majored in um, uh, behavioral psychology. Okay. That's what it was. So. Well, that's a good skill to have with what you're doing now. Well, I mean, psychology is <laughs> in general, you know, yeah. is, is a good uh, little life kind of hack, I guess. Yeah. So if you go to college, study psychology. Yeah. Especially behavioral psychology. You learn a lot. Yeah. So wow. we got we got people walking by the booth. So if I, if I wave at somebody, don't let me distract you. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, you lasted a lot longer than me. I think I lasted three months in my first job out of college. Three months. And I said, I'm going to go be a firefighter. I wanted to do something exciting. So, so you're just a career fireman, huh? Yeah. Just right out right 20, out the gate, kind of. 22 years. I'm retired now. But this, uh, you know, the, the job allowed me to uh, to do this because you work for 24 hours and you're off for 48 hours. So I've just basically had two lives had some time for to a kill. long time. But yeah. I'm retired from that now. And uh, so... Here we set. Well, thank you for your service. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, the firefighter, EMS, first responders, they, you know, they don't get the credit that they deserve. Yeah. Uh, but thank you for doing that. Appreciate that. And thank you for uh, getting into the firearms industry and yeah. innovating and making, you know, the products that we love better. So talk about what it is that you guys are creating over at Fostech. Well, one of the things we make is a, it's a pull and release trigger. So it's called the Echo. Uh, it's probably what, one of the things we're most known for. So... You have three modes of you know, safe, semi-automatic, and then in that third mode, you're going to get a round when you pull it, a round when you release it. Okay. So it's uh, still considered semi-auto by the ATF. It's the closest thing you're going to get to going really fast without having to buy some sort of transferable machine gun. Right. Um, so that's one of our product lines. The other thing we make is the Origin 12-gauge shotgun. Ah. Are you familiar? Have you ever heard of the Origin? Uh, I've heard of it, but I've not had any personal experience with it. So it's a magazine-fed, gas-operated shotgun. We've okay. been making that now for uh, probably 10 years. Okay. A uh, lot of development. I mean, uh, that was actually our second product we decided the to The shotgun do. was? A magazine-fed shotgun. Yeah. If I'd have known now what I knew, or know, <laughs> <laughs> however you say that, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. That was if not I the, knew then what I know now. There you go. That's it. I I'd might have bought have not, a cow. I probably would have <laughs> bought a cow. But... Um, we never gave up on it, and today it's a very reliable shotgun. So you got a lot of uh, the three gunners, competition shooters using it. We do have some guys doing that. Yeah, um, still trying to break into that market a little bit. To be honest okay. with you, it's we get more interest from uh, at this point law enforcement and a lot of military interest and a okay. lot of overseas uh, military and law enforcement interest because it it's very compact when you put it in a short barrel configuration. Uh, the stock will fold over. It's only 19 inches, so oh, a lot nice. of they're they're liking it for breaching. Okay, You're using that it makes for sense. a breaching shotgun. So, yeah. and what kind of uh, loads will it run? Anything in two and three quarter. Anything two and three quarter. Yeah, and you do need to have a certain, especially in the short barrel. You got to have a certain round that it does doesn't have to be like super powerful, but it it needs to have a little bit of energy, either the weight of the slug or the powder load itself. Right. There needs to be a little bit of a balance there to make sure it's reliable. But, and how did you come up with that name? Actually, we had purchased the origin from another company that was giving up on it. Ah. And it was already named. So, <laughs> there you go. So, um, 
That's the hardest part, it's naming something. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, from that, we went to making, uh, we started making AR-15s, and obviously the AR-15 market is a very watered down market. Lots of people in that space. So we knew we had to be doing something different. So and I'll hand this to you so you can feel it. So okay. we make our material. So rifle. for our listening audience, he just handed me a hand guard that feels like a piece of paper. Yeah. Weight wise. And it's still metal. But it's strong as crap. Yep. What is this made from? Titanium? No, what that is, it's an aluminum magnesium alloy. Okay. All right. So um, it's. Does, does a, this dissipate heat pretty good? It reacts similar to heat as aluminum would. Okay. Um, it. Um, it's basically 30% stronger than aluminum, and you're going to be about 30% lighter than aluminum. Yeah, it's super lightweight. Yeah. So, and you just come out with this? Yeah, we've been doing that for about five, seven years as well. Five, seven years. Yep. Okay. So it's taken us a while to get there to get it where it sits today. Uh, we're making a complete rifle out of it. I got, I brought it with me so you can feel that oh, as well. Oh, sweet. We love show and tell here. Yep. And if Evan was here. Yeah. Take some pictures. Yeah. Evan. So that. So what is this like? Uh, don't tell me. Okay. And it's got, this has got sights on it, no mag. Uh, I'm going to guess that this weighs four and a half pounds. 4.8. So I was, very, I was very damn good. close. Yeah, going, you did good on that. <laughs> <laughs> I know my weights. And you got ambi controls. Yep on this and that, what, what do you call on your ARs that is called the stealth line so a little interesting tidbit it is all of our rifles are named after airplanes I wonder why okay yeah well <laughs> uh, I, my background but my dad was also a fighter pilot so oh, I grew okay. up with the fighter pilot pilot father so nice yep so everything is that that is the uh, stealth lightning which is named after the uh, uh, a stealth aircraft the lightning yeah. So um, we have the, the Stealth Raptor, which obviously we all know the Raptor. Um, yeah. That's another version of that rifle we make. And then we have another uh, line we call the Flights. Okay. Again, all airplane themed. Right. Uh, the Phantom, the Tomcat. So everything is about airplanes with us. The Tomcats. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a Top Gun fan? Oh, absolutely, man. That's like, so we're probably about the same age. Yeah, I'm 49. Okay, we're not. I'm older. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than you, but you know that was the Top Gun. That's what got me interested in, mm -hmm. you know, aviation and wanting to fly and do all. That. I wanted to be a naval aviator, just oh, like absolutely. Maverick. That's you right. Know? Yeah. But I didn't have the perfect vision. Yeah. Without correction, then they wouldn't take you back then if you if you did it corrected. So you had to have perfect vision uncorrected. We've got a lot in common because I wanted to fly too. Obviously, my father was a fighter pilot. He retired flying A-10s. Which right. So you got a legitimate reason why you yeah. wanted to do it. I just had a stupid reason because of I, a movie. And, and I don't see colors very good, okay? So there you go. So uh, then I thought, oh, I might be a cop. Well, you got to be able to see colors if you're going to be a police officer because you got to describe who you're chasing, what color their right. shirt is. <laughs> so they that's where the fire department thing came in because they said, you know what? All you need to do is see green lights and red lights. And right. You'll be okay. So... Water don't have color. That's right. The fire's red. You know that's it's right. red anyway. And it's hot. You so feel the, you feel the heat. That's right. So this is this is really nice. So you've been making these for about what you said five years. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And do you have different variations, different calibers? Yeah. I the mean, barrels they, looks like they're. Uh, so I'm gonna sh do a shout out to the barrel. That is a that's a Faxon barrel. Okay. So you've heard of Faxon firearms. It's what they refer refer to as their gunner profile. So gunner profile. Some people think it's a pencil. Pencil, that's what I was going to say, yeah. And it's not. It has a kind of a pencil profile when you get past the gas block. Yeah. Okay? But when you go back towards the chamber, it widens back out into a more widened up profile. Yeah, it does. Which is where you need it. That's where the, you know most of your temperature is going to be and also most of the leverage from the gas system on the rifles down there. Right. So keep it thin and light where you can, but keep it heavier and strong where so it's needed. So does it kind of funnel? It does. Yes. But the inside diameter is the same, though, right? Correct. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. So, so it's it, not going to affect the gas or anything? No, no, no. So Very nice. And you doing the gas block, too? Is this your gas block? It's our gas blocks. That one's just a standard. We make an adjustable. Uh, we're basically a very competent machine shop that makes firearms. So most of the <laughs> stuff, you know, we're making in-house. Some things aren't, you know, we source, but almost everything we're making in-house. Yeah. Now, is your stuff... Uh, you know, we say mil spec. 
Is, are you able to switch out another company's upper so with, to put on your lower? Or? With the, all of those will fit on that. Obviously, you can tell that is a very kind of billeted, faceted look on yeah, that rifle there. It wouldn't match very well. It's very well together here. But no wiggle. Our our flight series is a mil spec. So yes, it looks just like a standard, okay. you know, forged AR-15 gotcha. out of that same material, still the lightweight characteristics. And is your lower? It's just standard the uh, the aircraft aluminum on no, your lowers. No, no, that's that. That's this the, is the lightweight on this one. Yeah, and on the other one as well that I just described. They're all okay. using that aluminum magnesium. Magnesium. Owl. Okay. Uh -huh. Very nice. Yep. And what do your lowers typically go for? Uh, here we're going to you're going to get the engineer into price talks. And, uh, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. So, I can I can better describe what our rifle pricing is than I can down all the way to the lowers. Okay. All right. That'll be, so, be fine. Um, the stealth series, which is in your hand there, this that is, is stealth. Okay. That that is our that's our top of the line. That happens to be what we sell the most of as well. Um, that rifle is is around seventeen hundred dollars. Okay. MSRP. So, MSRP seventeen hundred dollars mm -hmm. to get a less than five pound AR trigger. What are you doing with the trigger here? That's our that's our echo trigger in that one. You put the echo trigger in that rifle. Now you're just right under two grand. But our echo trigger goes for so around five hundred. trigger? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's right around five hundred dollars. You may have to. Run. Oh, got it. Oh, see what it does. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Uh, what's the release on that? It's like super quick. Super quick release. Well, it, yeah, it's going to be a negative pounds, right? It's you yeah, know, it's so. a negative pounds on the release. Right, right. The pull is probably what. That the are in, in, in the echo like two three pounds. Nah, it's it's more like four four and a half. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. It does have a longer stroke than a lot of triggers you're going to feel, but that's the that's getting all the way and running through all the parts inside there to make that release fire happen. Oh. Excuse me, guys. It's, okay. it's his first podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I told him I was going to be nervous about it. <laughs> um, so. No, this is really nice, man. I mean, for, for what you're getting on the the weight saving, the ergonomics that you've got going here, I really like that. Uh, it's a good looking good looking AR, and you, you're doing your own grips, I see. Uh, yep, own grip, own stock. That's our stock on the back of it as well. Very nice. Digging the stock. And what is your do you got a name for this? Do you sell just the stocks? Yeah, People so the stock stocks? is called the Tomahawk, and it's not because of the axe, it's because of the missile. Okay, okay airplane, another, air, another, airplane theme, right? Another aerospace, <laughs> yep. yep. Their other space theme, I like it. What's your what's your grip called? Uh, the saber grip. Okay. And these are called the mock rails. So mock, mock one, like mock one, uh, mock two, mock three, mock four. And saber, rails. that's an air, that's an aircraft. That's right. The saber. Yep. I'm familiar with it. Very nice. Uh, the, the the easy, you know, you said it's hard to come up with names, right? So and it is, but when, when you, you got a theme like that, airplanes are always named, and airplane parts and missiles always have cool names to them, so it makes it real easy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I dig it. Yeah. So if people want to get a hold of one of these, they go to your website. Yep. You've Got them in uh, dealers. Got we, them in gun we stores. Have, we have a dealer network. We have a we're, we're through wholesale. We sell direct. Uh, we have a website. So all the above. Okay, and if people are wanting to build a, like a Frankenstein gun, do you sell? We sell all the pieces and parts. All now, the pieces and parts. With the, with the stealth uh, uppers and lowers, we pair them up because we they need to go together. Yeah. But we will sell just the upper and the lower together, and then you can part it out however you want from there. There you go. So I like that. I'm digging it. So uh, what what do you guys? What's your latest newest offering that you've got with Fostech? So it's. It's not out, and I always hesitate to yeah. mention things that aren't out. So possibly something coming. Obviously, using this lightweight technology, it would make sense to go into an AR-10 platform or something like that and try to make a lightweight AR-10. So that's in the works. Right. I'm not going to give you any timetables on that, but okay. that's that's in the works. That's okay. That's probably the latest things that we've been working on here. And of course, recently. the AR-10s aren't. You know, there's no mil spec for an AR-10, no, so no. what are you going to base yours on? It's probably going to be a little bit of our own, honestly. Okay. Because we might add a few things that you you might want in there that can't get on other ones. Yeah. 
Okay. And since there is no commonality to it, I didn't it's feel I didn't feel it important to have to follow the mold as much there. So, I got you. Yeah. I got you. So it, it's going to be more of a proprietary kind of yep. design. And, yep. Okay. Yep. Well, that's something to look forward to. Definitely. You, like within the next year, or two years, you're looking definitely to? within the next two. Okay. I don't know if we'll have it done this year. There was a lot of a lot of stuff that goes into that material. Is not just off the shelf. You can't just go buy it like you can aluminum. Yeah. So there's a little bit more development in getting it off off the ground. Is this? Uh, are you able to resource this in the United States, or yes. do you have to go outside to? Nope. It's it's resourced, resourced here in the in states. In the yep. states. Yep. Very cool. So what uh, you got to buy like the big giant chunks it, of ingots. The ingots, is that what they call them? Ingots? Yeah, ingots. The yep. Ingots of those. How much does an ingot of uh, aluminum magnesium weigh? I wouldn't even know, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, uh, it's 30% light, lighter than, than an aluminum. ingot of aluminum, okay? So whatever aluminum go. is, <laughs> yeah, you 30% of that, yeah. you're going to get this. Yeah, yeah. What about the, as you're going through and milling it, I don't know if you know the, the waste factor difference between... This is going to be about the same because yeah, you got pretty it's much the similar. same cuts and very similar, yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, because we start with like the rails and extrusion. It starts as an extrusion. Yeah, similar to like an aluminum rail would. And you're like CNC and you got CNC machines mm -hmm. that yep. you go through and yep. so get all that. There's just a lot to do to using that material. I mean, even the way you machine it, if you're not careful, it'll literally destroy your machines. Yeah, and you guys are in Indiana. You mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. Yep. yep. So that's nice. Another uh, Indiana manufacturer. There's not a lot of gun manufacturers in Indiana, is there? No, um, not, there's there's a few, but not very many big ones. I had some uh, people on earlier. Were, uh, they're in uh, uh, Idaho. Yeah. And we we're talking about all the there's a, there's a slew of firearms manufacturers in Idaho. Yeah. And they're like, hmm. Wonder why that is. I don't know. But I would love to see your shotgun. Absolutely. So uh, I'll try to get by there. Um, this week sometime. You guys got a range day coming up that you're going to be doing? Where uh, people come out and shoot, try you, out your firearms? Are you going to, we don't personally, are you going to be at Eric's shoot? I'm going to try. When is it? It's normally in October. I know he does like two, didn't he? He started talking about that. I'm not sure. I know. I oh, know last that, year they did two. I know the October one always happens for sure. Okay. So, but uh, if not in, you know, obviously you could, you're more than welcome to visit us anytime you I would, would like. love to. I mean, it's not that far of a drive. Yeah, where's home for you? So just outside Nashville. Okay, yeah, well, we'll just, let's just, uh, let's just get some information, swap there, and let's you do just it. come visit. I think so. I think I should come up there and uh, bring, bring the camera crew and yeah. let's do some shootings up there. Let's do it. I would love to do that. We got an indoor range right there at the shop, and we also have an outdoor range if the weather's right. We'll go play. Perfect. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So, David, I appreciate you taking time to be on. So, give everybody websites, social media, all that, where they can get in touch with you and Fostech. Fostech.com. That's it. That's you got links to all your socials and all that on there? Yep. Yep. Very good. So. Very good. So, Leadheads, that does it for day one of the NRA 2023 here in Indy at the Keltec booth, bringing you all the cool interviews at the lead course. And Evan's taking awesome pictures. And we got to get a picture of us together absolutely. with this stuff, too. So. Thank you for having me. No, absolutely, man. Anytime. You're welcome back anytime. When you guys got new stuff you want to talk about, you got releases, yep. come here, and I'll be happy to let you uh, talk about it, yep. release it to our audience. Man, you guys are way too professional. <laughs> <laughs> that was really it's, cool. They are way too organized for me, man. This is like, hit the record and let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Leadheads, we're at day two of the NRA here in Indy, bringing it to you from the official lead quarters at Caltech. Yeah. Rocking the Caltech booth. It's, and it, today's like Saturday, the day. Oh, yeah. it's this is the day. For and sure. there are a lot of people out there. So you're probably going to hear some background noise, but not too much. No. We're kind of in a little booth here with the headphones on. This is kind of what it sounds like when we record. Okay. So that's what the listener's going to hear, Paul. There you go. Yeah. Paul was worried about the, the background noise. I've got professionals here. He's I asked I asked him by pulling out the ambient, and he's like, "You give me the what?" <laughs> I was like, "What's that?" What? How? I said, "That's ambiance." Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. That pulling adds out the ambiance. That adds to the whole the whole experience for the listener, you know. So, for sure. But it looks like we're gonna have a video audience too, so I'm excited about that. Oh, so, that's sweet, right? Didn't we have that last time? Well, we were just we were just like hand. Oh, right, it right, wasn't right, live. right, 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 right. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. So gotcha, we were doing gotcha. like uh, Instagram live. Yeah, yeah, that's and right, stuff that's like right. That, so. This is, 
Nice. Isn't this a nice setup? It is. It's pretty sweet. So, ladies and gentlemen, joining, joining Paul and I here at the Caltech booth is Jeff Gonzalez, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Marty. I'm excited to be back here. You, it seems you guys, like it was just like the other day. It, it was just a few months ago. It was. It yeah. was. Uh, we got a lot of interviews there at the uh, the Caltech booth at SHOT Show. Yeah. I uh, just released the last one, as you're hearing this, the I, week before. I was going to ask if you'd run through them yet. Yeah. I just finally got through the last one last week. Holy cow. I do have one that I haven't released yet. Oh, yeah? And I'll tell you about it off air. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell Those you, are the best. Yeah, and you, you probably you were best. part of it, so you probably know the train wreck I'm talking about. So. <laughs> you haven't released the train wreck yet. Yeah, the okay, train wreck. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Let's do that as a, as a best of or subscriber side. Yeah, I'm, I'm saving that. Yeah, for a special occasion. Yeah, draw those draw those viewers in. Yeah, lure so, them in. Is he here? I haven't seen him. I haven't seen goodness. him either. Thank goodness. But <laughs> you listeners may remember that Jeff joined us uh, when we had John Gilstrap on the author. That's right. And uh, you're going solo today. I am. But we had learned that Jeff has his own training company in Texas. Yep. And you are doing, you're actually doing some seminars here at NRA. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about that. So, you know, we've had a great relationship with NRA. Uh, we started doing seminars with them probably about five years ago, I think it was. And it, they really were interested in the concealed carry aspect of what we do. Pretty much all of our, uh, all of our, work focuses on like you know pistol rifle the standard stuff but about i don't know 10 years ago we really started focusing on concealed carry and that became huge for us and ever since then we've been here at nra we've been focusing on concealed carry so this year we're talking about micro compact pistols how popular they've gotten how much we you know how much we've seen them in our classes and then of course you know little tips and tricks on how to how to shoot them better how to carry them better things like that yeah, so the micro compact, kind of a, a new, I guess, nomenclature yeah. in the firearms industry. I think that's just somebody who just wanted to, to try to capitalize on the subcompact. Oh, yeah. And just, yeah, I was going to say, we changed gonna be the micro. sub from micro, yeah. micro to sub from sub. Yeah. 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 So it was, it, it's been interesting to see. You know, I think, uh, you know, I, you can, if you really wanted to go down into the weeds, I, I suppose you can go into like the mouse guns and pocket pistols and things like that but yeah those typically were not chambered in nine millimeter they were some like other 22 yeah or, yeah uh, smaller like that that one that folds up yes a little 22 yeah 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 yeah. Shot. yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, can't yeah. Remember, I don't know what it's called but somebody just came by and they were showing me I theirs. Think it's called the assassin yeah the assassin <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> yeah it's so small one hit wonder i don't know that's yeah. a good one too yeah but uh yeah the micro compacts are We've, we've designated them, or I shouldn't say we, the industry has designated them as, uh, as chambered in 9 mil. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's a couple that have 380 variants, but they are just a subsection of the flagship you know, model, if you will. Gotcha. Yeah. Did, were you aware of that? Uh, no. I, I'm wondering, though, when are we going to do, are they going to switch and start calling them macros? Are we, when they are get we, bigger? That's well, bigger. We, we, went from, we went from regular guns to compact guns, to subcompact yeah. guns, to micro compact guns. Are we getting smaller? Are we going to have a macro compact? Gun? There already is one. There, there's people out there with <laughs> there a, already is one with a thesaurus. They're like, okay, new, yeah, new words. What, what can new we words. use? Sig, Sig took that one, so they came out with the three six five macro. There, there you go. So there yeah, that go. happened. I think last year. It's I like can't. a micro penis. Yeah, a macro. <laughs> I don't know about you. I'm, I'm macro. Are you a over macro? Here. Yeah, I'm <laughs> macro over here. Paul's like, speak for yourself. Yeah, man. <laughs> speak for yourself. Man. Don't lure me into that yeah, conversation. I got a hog leg over here. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go get witnesses and you know, affidavits. Not fun. Yeah. So we've seen them uh, grow in popularity significantly, and this um, we saw two new or we saw two new models released here very recently. One is catching a lot of publicity right now uh, fn's new re, uh, they, I, what are they calling it oh gosh fn's new they got a micro yeah i saw, I saw it's a post um, of it the other reflex day. sorry i had to think about that it's the it's called a reflex okay and the basically reflex. the micros are being defined as the, you know from a kind of feature rich point of view they're three inch barrel four inch frame height um they weigh about 20 ounces or less Okay. Then they're chambered in nine mil, and they have a magazine capacity of at least ten. So that's that's what defines, that defines a, mi a, yeah, a, a micro. micro. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. But it has to be <laughs> nine millimeter. Or three eighty. So yeah, three three eighty is you know like those are offshoots. I think they're not really. And who the, decides this? So really, <laughs> what, the, the the same person that made Pluto a planet. Yeah, yeah. We what we did was we we squared all the manufacturers that produced a you know that use terminology to describe their product as micro, and so we started collecting all the metrics behind those guns, and then we averaged them out. Okay. So that's kind of you know because some some of them are not exactly you know some of them weigh twenty one ounces. Some of them have, you know, 3.6 inch barrel. Some of them are, you know, 11 round capacity. So right. it's it, it, it's like that's the ballpark for for what we're seeing. Um, the macro that I just described technically wouldn't fit into that category because it's got a much longer frame height. It's or, or um, yeah, frame height. It's a bit beefier of a, a little thicker on the. Well, it's not the other. I'm sorry. One other. Like a high point. Yeah. One other. One other characteristic. Talk crap. Macro. About what, I wonder if High Point is a macro. We'll have to bring Kara from High Point on and ask her whether they're going to do a macro or a micro. Or a micro. Yeah. One other characteristic I forgot to mention was it has a one-inch circumference around the magazine base. So that makes a big difference. Okay. Yeah. Um. Wow. All right. So, is there is there a guide that people can can go to? Is this on? The, <laughs> yeah. I it's, um, my, nah, I don't think there's anything. You know, it, it's it's like I want to have my. Com. I don't want to call it a clip. You know, I want to call it a magazine. <laughs> go to, Good point. You know, I don't want to call a, a compact a, a subcompact. Sure. Is, not, it, yeah. is it in the style guide? I don't That's want to be a yeah. I, it I don't think guide? it's made I the style guide. Yeah, the, I just the don't want to be a press style guide. <laughs> you know, actually, I don't think everybody's going to come. Somebody did you with a fun party. <laughs> Somebody did one of those. They did a style guide, like the AP style guide, only they did it for guns. I Yeah. They did it for firearms terminology. Okay. Yeah. That, that would be very helpful. And, and everyone I from the so, Associated yeah. Press took it and threw it in the garbage. Yeah, yeah. They're like, they we don't need this. We'll make our own terms. Yeah. It's yeah. black. We'll do our own AR-15. thing. AR-15. This does not Every, fit our agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. It's a, it's a black Trash. AR-15. Is, did, you know, the Caltech uh, sub-2000 was uh, you know, made famous again recently. But the, the F—it's always been famous. What are well, you the, the about? crazy thing is, is, is you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, you know the, the, everybody knows what you're talking about. He, Move she, on. He, he, <laughs> she, he, <laughs> we don't need a hype. No, but the thing is, is, is um, I was over talking to High Point. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, what's up? So you remember in '99 when the psychos camped out in Dayton outside of the of mm. High Point's manufacturing? I don't. Oh, they did. Oh, yeah. They well, did. I'm not doubting. They, I just don't They had remember to get it. security. They had to, like, make their phone numbers unlisted because they were getting death threats and everything, right? Because it was their fault that yeah. Columbine oh. happened. Oh, oh right. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. Right, right, right. So Nashville happens. The media, they just radio silence. They, I didn't see the words Caltech or Sub-2000 one time in any story. Huh. Did you? I don't recall. No. Yeah, I, I don't. But uh, there's 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 a five thousand pictures on the internet. There's pictures of yeah, it, it's of out it there. holding it. So let's move but, on. But <laughs> no, dude, I'm picking up what you I'm let's picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. So back to the the micros. We started to see, you know, in our concealed carry class, the the, the dominant pistol that we see is generally a compact, like a Glock nineteen or a three twenty compact. Right. Dominated. It's just hard to, exactly. It's hard to see other guns. We'll see others, but those are going to be the principal guns there. Right. And about, I think it was about a year after the 365 came out, we started to see those micros as the, you know, we would see occasionally somebody bring like a smaller gun and they might use it for a couple of drills and then they put it back in their bag. Yeah. And so then we started to see them actually using it as the principal gun through the class. So it wasn't something they would shoot every now and then. It was something they would shoot for as the entire class. Yeah. yeah. And that was a big shift. We saw that. And that was a, because previously those smaller guns were not fun to shoot or easy to shoot. Yeah. And they've made these things. You know, I'm not. I'm not going to say they're as capable as their larger framed firearms, but they are certainly. Yeah, they are certainly a lot of fun to shoot. I think um, one of the things that also made them really popular, or m not really popular, but more popular, is that now they're also pistol-mounted optics ready. So they've got the capacity now to throw on some sort of little mini, mini red dot on top of the slides. So in this uh, seminar that you're, you're doing here at NRA, yeah. 
Uh, talk about kind of the things that you're covering. Is that is that basically what you're doing? Yeah, or are yeah. You actually so doing like handling. No, no, no. It's all. It's all. Uh, right now, we have two of them that are going to be so. Two of them that are strictly centered around the micro compact pistol. That's all we're talking about. Um, the first one was again trying to help define what the micro compact pistol is, how we, what we've seen, how they are working. Then the second uh, class is the today. The one we're doing is just like conceal carry 101 just some a six-step guide to doing it better and then tomorrow i think we're doing shooting tips for the micro compact pistol and that'll be very nice yeah that'll be fun like i said we're starting to see them more in the classes and we started to put pit them head to head against some of the larger brethrens and you know with somebody that knows what they're doing we're really starting to see that gap that performance gap shrink between the compacts, subcompacts, and the micro compacts. Right. So, now, is this a course that you're offering at your yeah, yeah, your you facility? Can, they can go onto the website. Um, we, you know, we do a lot of different classes, but uh, the one that's the most popular is the intermediate carry two class. What are you looking for? The silver part. The silver part. So follow the right here. So the answer is that is a fantastic idea, and uh, we fully endorse it. Fully right. endorse. We fully endorse everything that Jeff just said. <laughs> so we, we fully, <laughs> everything that we're Jeff rearranging just said. some mics here, guys. <laughs> so yeah, uh, My we're bad. doing this live. All right. So the only thing I want to promote uh, on this, Marty, is the fact that when we were here in shot at shot, it's I was we were the, talking about the, the completion of James Yeager's book, it's under the Four the Pillars of Fighting. Yeah. And uh, how we, we the plan was that we were going to have it done. It was going to be ready by NRA 2023. Right. Well, we were able to accomplish that. Mission accomplished. Mission, Congratulations. Mission accomplished. Uh, it's done. It's ready. It's called the Four Pillars of Fighting. And at 1 p.m. today, I know not everybody's listening to this live, but yeah. uh, at 1 p.m. today, we are going to be over at the G-Lock booth. And the big lock. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to be at the at the G-Lock booth and uh, Glock for you guys. And, uh, we're going to be doing the, the official live the launch book launch doing some, yep. some autographs yeah yeah james is obviously not here uh to, yeah. to sign it for us but uh, he asked me before he left the earth he asked me to finish the book for him so i did and uh, it's also our 10th anniversary your 10th anniversary. it is our 10th anniversary your 10th anniversary our 10th anniversary, our 10th anniversary. Our 10th anniversary was actually december we started yeah. wow yeah damn but, uh, good for you 10 man years of educating the uneducated man dude that is impressive <laughs> marco has joined us ladies and gentlemen marco vorbiff Paul Marshall. Nice to have you. Nice to see you. Jeff Gonzalez. Yeah, I think you all know each other. On the, on the, um, the AK corner. Right. Yes. Right. Well, yeah. I, yeah, I knew y'all had done, done an AK James corner together. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Right on. Yeah. Well, you know why I, didn't re- why I didn't recall? Because I was just overwhelmed by the amount of knowledge that was being thrown down. I just sat there. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. We, he's just, I think the good segment was when we went around the room and remembered James. That's right. That was the. That was right yeah. after. We did. Yeah, we did the wow. little yeah, memorial kind of. Yeah. Kind of yeah. deal. Yeah. Nice. Did you know James Jager? I did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he and I went way, way back. I think he was actually still on the force when I first met him. Oh, okay. Yeah. A long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. Um, quick, quick James story. Uh, I was one of the few trainers that was allowed to go in and train at uh, Mid South. So we brought private, you know, private class or private citizens into Mid South in. Um, not too far from your neck of the woods. Okay. And which is our, that's our training center where we send all of our special operations guys. They go down to mid South and that's where we do all our shooting stuff. So I was very fortunate to get a class, an open enrollment class taught there. It's like a Disney world. It was the Disney world before Disney Blackwater. Disney world of, of ranges. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very much so. It still is, I think. But, um, and, uh, somehow or another James found out that I was doing the class there and he, Quasi invited himself to come as like an assistant instructor. Okay. And so. <laughs> that he sh- sounds right. Yeah, he showed up. And I'll never, f- it, what was so funny was, and we trained long. And the one, re- what's really nice about Mid-South, it is designed strictly for just training. I mean, that's it. It's bare bones. I mean, when I say bare bones, it's all about training. Yeah. And it was a frigid, cold, wet class it was ridiculously un- unseasonably best. cold it was the best and i can remember we're we're training at night and they have lights that illuminate the target uh, so you know everything's done there so you just keep training no matter day or night doesn't matter 
And I remember looking over at James. He's got this big old wool watch cap on with his head, you know, his earphone, his ear pro on, on on top of it. And he's just got this shitting grin from ear to ear, just <laughs> love in every life. All everybody else is absolutely miserable. I mean, it was cold. I mean, you That's you know, kind of weather. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was so funny. So. Uh, that was a great class. There's actually very few people that are still around from that class. He was probably enjoying everybody else's pain. Oh, you know, without right? a doubt. Without a doubt. So, yeah, that um, – and what's funny is about that same time I met Andy Stanford. And okay. so Andy and James were good friends at that time. And Andy kind of dropped off the map. Last month I ran into Andy after not seeing him for like, I don't know, 10, 15 plus years. So, you know, it's a funny conversation that, you know, we're talking about James, talking about Andy. It was – those are, you know, blasts from the past, for yeah. sure. Yeah. You know, th those are the classes that you remember. Oh, yeah. And we were just out at Gunsight uh, about three, four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I I'm up in the mountains, and there's freaking, you know, there's four feet of snow. For sure. On my front lawn, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to Arizona. It's going go to be Arizona. Warm. And, and yeah. At very <laughs> least, the sun will be out, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get there, and it, and it started raining, and the whole first day, it rained the whole day. Day. Yeah, and, and it was just a steady, and, and of course it was not cold enough to snow. It's like thirty-eight, yeah. thirty-seven right. degrees, just little right windy, there. In that what, when was that again? It was like uh, two weeks four ago. Weeks ago. Oh, okay, okay. Three, three four weeks weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and now the next day the sun came out, but it was windy all day. But those are the you know people will remember that. Yeah. If it was a beautiful day and everyone, I was the same way. Well, I went up there a few months ago, and uh, you know Arizona. I'm thinking Arizona. You know, it's gonna yeah. be warm, Dude, so I packed 100%. a bunch of. Or, and it snowed. <laughs> yeah. So like, and, we, and I had like you know real thin. Oh yeah, short I, sleeve shirts and everything. I plan my training schedule when I travel throughout the country, kind of around the seasons. You know, so we we go up north in the summertime and down south in the wintertime, right? So Arizona technically is not south, but it's it's where you know we usually are there in like December and January, February time frame. So we did a class last December, and it was miserably cold and wet, and it was like a freak. So we had a like. After that class was, it was a success, but not really a success. So we rescheduled it for like February, I think it was. Same thing. Yeah. Miserably cold and wet. So Mother for, Nature, man. Oh yeah, she is. She you can't it, predict it Mother be, Nature. It, I've been there in, in December when it snowed, and that's okay. I mean, yeah. as long as you got the clothes. It, yeah, if you I'd got rather, the clothes. I would it's fine. rather. I'll shoot in the snow all day long. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, I love this Marco, snow. which we when I've got the oh, proper, absolutely. I'm sure you know what? snow. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Marco can tell you about snow. <laughs> My best classes usually the winter classes, and we do them. Well, we did them in Pennsylvania, like in the right above the New York border or some, or oh, vice versa, yeah. somewhere in there. That's really cold. And it's yeah. At one time we had uh, like 16 degrees and <laughs> fresh blanket of snow and stuff, and I, I just I was like grinning the entire. Day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, grinning ear to ear. That's you're supposed to run AKs in the snow. <laughs> yeah, so our listeners know Marco is here uh, at the booth from 10 to noon today, and he is going to be, where's the camera at? He's going to be signing his book or the, your other books too. Any book that you've got of Marco's, bring it by, and uh, he will sign it today. Nice. Caltech booth. 8263, I believe, is the booth number. Caltech. The Caltech booth. The Caltech booth. Look up yeah, in the sky. It. Yes. Yeah. It signs everywhere. So Marco was on our last AK corner and the previous one. So he's been on the last two AK corners. Nice. And we talked to East German uh, AKs on the last episode. Make sure you go check that out. It dropped yesterday. So fresh out, new on the market, the AK corner season five, episode three, I believe it was. East German AKs with Marco. Nice. But uh, I guess I see how I ranked in your pantheon of... Joe Schmoes because I didn't get the link. What do you mean? You didn't send me the link to that to the podcast. Well, I haven't. I'm not home. <laughs> <laughs> I had it on auto uh, auto send. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got so. a senior moment right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. I love it. I'm here, Marco. I, I couldn't send it, but it's out there. It just it just dropped yesterday, so you know it's good. fresh. It's fresh. Good, good. That was a good episode. It was. It was a real good episode. I learned a lot. So thank you for for being on and I, I, I was just uh, I was just supplying the background kind of information, not, <laughs> no. uh, not much of a No, we had we had James with uh, Factory forty seven on also and he's got a blog on his website, factory forty seven dot com and we kinda based our conversation around the, the blog that he had done. Nice on those. Uh, it was it was very interesting. Well, I knew you were packing up and getting ready to travel, so Yeah. No, the uh, it's funny when you say East German, how many people Hey Zach 
where's East Germany? East. In the east? Yeah, Zach says it's in the east. All right. <laughs> people his age and even people Zach, Jared's age who, they, they're they like, what are you talking about? Yeah. That the eastern part yeah. of Germany? Yeah. Eastern. You know, I've, how many people here have, have guns that have West German markings on them? I think I might have a, I, one I, or two pistols that I've says got a made SIG. in West Germany. Yeah. So I've oh, got a SIG yeah. that says made in W. Germany, Germany. Right. on it. Right? I've seen them. I've seen them before, but I don't have and, them. And cause, but Rare. it's been so long. I mean, it's been 30 years now since yeah. the reunification. Was it 94? 91, no, 92. 90, uh, I think the wall came down in 1989. Yeah. But the yeah. Okay. Reunification. It was like a 90 Listen to the podcast because yeah. we talk about it there. Yeah, so around <laughs> ninety ninety one, the wall came down and they reunified Germany. And so you got people today, you got people under 40 that if you say West Germany, East Germany, or whatever, they're like, what? Yeah. yeah. Or they're like, uh, like you said, where is it? They'll yeah. say, well, it's east. It's, it's east. in the, in yeah. the western don't know. part of Germany. They it's don't, they, it's like, Germany are you open. trying to prank me? <laughs> yeah, this whole there's time. only one Germany. There can't be. There's not. No, no. They would, they there would was off two, it. There's man. two Germanies. Yeah. You know what's funny is. You tell somebody there's two Germanies today. The, the that's what I'm saying. They'll believe yeah. you. Yeah. They'll believe that's you. Like, yeah, okay. Well, you? Although concept is not new. You've got two Koreas. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. You got two Carolinas. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. You got two Virginias. They used got two Dakotas. They used to be one. The Virginias <laughs> used to be one. You know. Yeah. I, wa- I Makes wonder. Makes sense. They have two Germanies, right? I wonder if there's like big old wall running between the South and North Dakota. <laughs> North Dakota. Yeah. Or I think the Virginia there is. Yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Think it's a natural one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Depends on who you talk to. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So, Jeff, give everybody uh, your website and sure, the sure. classes you got coming up. All right. So, uh, tridentconcepts.com. And let's see. The next three classes, I should know this. We've got a class in Philadelphia this coming weekend. That's a Carry 2 class. Uh, then we go out to San Diego for another Carry 2 class. And then we go back to Austin for a Rifle 2 class. Okay. So, that's uh, like April, May, June. So that's Accurate. that's that's the first half of the year. Then yeah. Well, we're kind of in the booking up your next half. Yeah, yeah. We're well. Um, I started doing a little less traveling because I started doing some other stuff that was, uh, you know, like occupying more of my time. And so has John been blowing your phone up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, I I kind of took a little bit of a hiatus from traveling. One of the things I did, I did publish a book, so that kind of took a lot of my time. Oh, okay. What's and, your book? Uh, the Concealed Carry Manual. Okay. Conceal yeah, you can go to the website or concealedcarrymanual.com. Okay. And then um, after, like after I kind of resurfaced from writing the book, I've been kind of enjoying less road time, so I haven't really been as motivated to get back out and do more classes. But, right. but the interest is enough to where we'll have to start doing more classes. Um, you know, people can't travel to all the different regions that sure. we go to, so we'll start. We'll start Why expanding. You're spreading out, you're spreading love. Yeah, we we, we are. To get to you. We like to spread it. We like to spread we it. We like to spread it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to spread some more uh, 2A love and news here on the Talking Lady podcast. Bring it to you from the 2023 NRA at the Keltec booth. Paul's coming back with us. Marco's coming back with us. So stay tuned, awesome. Leadheads. Awesome. All right. It's perfect timing, actually. This is the Speakeasy podcast. We had some pretty good guests on it. I had uh, um, Jack Carr on once. Actually, I had Jack Carr on my podcast a uh, week after he was on Rogan's, Joe Rogan's. Yeah. And I was nerve-wracking because we were talking about his new book. I've had him on twice. He's going to be on. Um, He's a cool dude. That guy can talk. I got him next month, too. He's smart, too. Oh, yeah, super smart. Thank you. Yeah, I felt like an idiot. I just needed to make sure I had good questions for him and then just let him talk. Yeah, that's yeah. all I did is yeah. – let him talk about his book. Yeah, <laughs> I got him on one time. We were, God, it was a good hour and a half. Of, like, live Facebook. or you're gonna do it live or you're no? Gonna... We're just recording. Yeah, yeah okay. we're recording. I'm gonna put so it in out. In case after. I say something st- stupid, I can edit it. Okay, I'll yeah. try not to, but I do. Man, I think you'll be fine. I got loose lips, especially if you've done a podcast before. So. Yeah, I love podcasting. If I could do this all day, like Joe Rogan, yeah, that would be life. Yeah, that's what yeah. I do. Yeah, <laughs> well. This is, I don't even know if this is working. Okay, do you get your photos done? Because I'm going to take my He's going to do photos the whole time. Yeah. So. Oh, crap. But you look amazing. No, With take this? It yeah. Do you have the video rolling? Yep. You got the video rolling. All right. So we're doing the video. Okay. He might break out alive. Who knows? Yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> you never Tell know. me if you do. You never know what Evan's going to do. 
So, um, <coughs> are we um, are we recording right now? Are we going? I'm I'm recording it. Yeah. No shit. Okay. Yeah, we're recording, man. All well, right. You know the golden always be recording, right? Yeah. Yeah. ABR. You can catch the. Yeah, you got to catch the good stuff. The good catch stuff's the also stuff. right before you start. When too. you start warming up. Yeah. You know, you get the good. You're like, damn! I wish I was recording yep. that. Yeah. I had another one. I used to be in the supplement industry. Okay. Um, a company like, called Man Sports. It was an acronym for Metabolic Augmented Nutrition, and we had one called the Flavor of the Day. That was what it was. <laughs> that was so, the name of the podcast? Yeah, we had a bunch of meatheads. That was really all, all we talked about with right. supplements and bodybuilding. Bodybuilding. Yeah. yeah. Well, we talk we talk fitness from time to time on nice. here, too. We don't just talk guns. Cool. That's the good thing about our podcast is we show the, the diversity and the variety within our industry. You know, it's not just guns. People who like guns just aren't interested in guns. They're interested in yeah. Everything. So we talk movies. You right. know, we'll talk everything. Okay. Music. You know, Get had, weird. Had uh, Carl Malone on the show. We talked. Oh, I'm Carl Malone. <laughs> Carl Malone. Malone. NRA. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's awesome. Cool. <laughs> Big giant Carl Malone. Yeah. So I mean, been doing it ten years. We've had a lot of people on. I can't. That's awesome. I can't remember everybody. Well, ten years. I'm honored to be on it then. Well, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yeah. Thank, thank you for being on. So joining us, Leadhead. You hear the voice there. He's new to the the Leadhead Brigade. We've got Rich. Yeah, Rich you want, Wilkins. You want to know your last name? Oh, I don't know if you know oh, Rich Wilkins. That's okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have an alias. Some people know me as Patriot Rich. Patriot Rich. Yeah, that's my Instagram handle. Okay. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of our followers or listeners are following you. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably. This is yeah, easy I'll crossover say there. say so, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Definitely. Well, I'm happy to be here. And you're representing today... J.K. Armament. J.K. Armament. Yep. 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 They. Uh, I was at, formerly at Silencer Co. Is their... Uh, creative marketing director and prior to that for two years i was at uh, dead air as their marketing director oh okay good yeah. old mike yeah pappas is the man he is i've yeah. had him on a couple of times he's, he's a funny guy he's he's a good interview yeah he is funny yeah i miss him i, I especially uh, later in the evenings oh yeah <laughs> with a little jack daniels a little jack yeah. daniels yeah and a, yeah yeah a couple of little drinks of encouragement yeah yeah, I, I he's so of, mellow. He's just always. Oh yeah. He's like just so monotone level. He's ten steps ahead of you though. That's the thing about Mike is sometimes you don't know where the conversation's going, and then he drops the punchline. And you're like, oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. P- yeah. Pappas is good people. It takes you a slow ride in that convertible Cadillac of his. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, smooth. It's really smooth. Yep. So J.K. Armament. Talk about the, what you guys do. So the exciting thing about JK at NRA this year is we we um, we just launched a new shotgun suppressor. It's the Sweet. SGX 12G, yeah, and it's exclusive with Silencer Shops. That's why I was over at the Silencer Shop booth. Okay. So uh, they made me wear my cowboy getup because it's that's just I guess my persona right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got many looks, but right now it's it's, it's the stash. Yeah, it's the Yellowstone you, you Ridge. Got the big, you got the big uh, porn stash yeah. going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, it grows on me, you know. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I feel like you Mr. rock it well. I'm Mr. Potato Head. Mr. Potato Head. Yeah, my wife she chooses what I look like. You know, From right now it's the stash. Yeah, yeah. is the beard come and beard, go too? Beard comes and goes. Sometimes it's the clean shave. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm uh, the same way. What's this one? Uh, the flavor saver. The flavor saver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> that, done that. I did, did that for a while. Actually, Kevin Brittingham made fun of me when I was at Dead Air. Oh yeah, because I had I was rocking this for a while. You just had the flavor saver. He ta- what did he call me on it? On Beat his- Nick. No, he called me Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's a compliment. What's so. that guy's name? Uh, I can't. Re- yeah, I know you're talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. love me some Limp Biscuit, man. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's some good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Kevin's a funny guy. Yeah, we got some characters in the silencer world. It's a small. There's, there's some characters in this whole industry. Yeah, you know? yeah, and and it's there, there's a lot of I wouldn't say nepotism, but you know, like you, you know, one day you'll be at this company, and then you know the next show you're with this other company, yeah. and it's just a lot of moving around. Yeah, I feel like a major league pitcher sometimes. At least <laughs> exactly. At least in the traded. suppressor space. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I love I love this industry. Um, Sometimes it's exhausting because the trolls that come out of the wood work, and it's like, you know, we eat our own kind. We do. We have a I have a bad tendency of doing it, but I try to keep those people at bay. Yeah, yeah. It's the alphas, the meal team sixers. I call them. <laughs> <laughs> they just got nothing. That's better a to patch. Do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Meal team, team sixer. Six. That that would be a great patch. 
So this shotgun suppressor that you guys are putting out, JK Armament, talk about uh, the features of that and compa- That's a, compatibilities. It's beautiful. It, you know, there's not very many on the market right now. You got Silencer Code came out with their um, uh, the Salvo, which is a great can. Rex Selenium's got one too. I don't have much experience with that, mm-hmm. um, but it did fill a void. Uh, sure, it, it met. It, we went more practical with it, so. The material we used, it's lightweight. Um, we use the term mission configurable as opposed to modular. And the reason that military term is used is because, and this is this is true for all of our suppressors, uh, based on the host weapon that you're using. Oh, you using, brought show into. I brought Look at you. One. That's nice. the CCX nine millimeter mission configurable. So you don't, you're not limited, right? You've got your full length configuration, but say oh. you want to turn it into a K cam. You can do that, right? Now, the other two shotgun suppressors are also um, modular, right? Uh, but the ease of use is, is there with ours, um, as well as the mountability uh, and how the choke operates. So the choke is actually in the end cap uh, on the SGX-12G, yeah, um, which is really cool. So we got, you know, you can go full ski modified, all that good stuff. Um, and then mounting system. Um, That's what I want to, yeah. Yeah, so the mounting system, we call it the CRMD, acronym for Choke Replacement Muzzle Device. Okay. Um, it goes into where your choke would normally go. Right. Um, and and if, you, if you need a barrel threaded, JK will do that for you. Okay. Um, and then if you've also got weird ones, right? Because that's there's a lot of different chokes out there. Yeah. And we don't have it, then we'll, we will make a custom one for you. Okay. So you'll never get no on that. And then the other beautiful thing is, is our warranty... You know, we went for that kind of that Vortex model. You know, great value product, exceptional warranty. We don't ask questions. You could throw it into traffic and it gets run over. It's like, just don't tell us. Yeah. 24 <laughs> hours, 24, 48 hours. We won't we'll ask you if you one. don't tell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, tell us if it's a funny story, but. Well, there you go. Yeah. If you yeah. got video of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're still covered. Yeah. And then we actually, we had the opportunity to work with uh, Genesis Arms on the launch too. Okay. Uh, the exclusive launch with Silencer Shop uh, with the new John Wick gun. Which is really cool. Um, so big, big name popping up here. Oh uh, yeah, quite often. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, I haven't seen the movie yet. The number four. Yeah, have you? I have. Is it good? I like one, two, and three better. To be really? Honest. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the, I, I might f- need to watch it again. You know? Yeah. So. What about look. the dragon's breath shooting out of there? Oh, that was amazing. Yeah, that yeah. scene. Yeah, that yeah. scene was amazing. I want to see that. And you actually can shoot dragon's breath through our through suppressor. your cans. Yeah. So. Uh, 12 gauge, you got buck, bird, uh, um, slug, all of it. Yeah. So you can, can shoot get, all that through. You can get weird through your can. Yeah. Yeah. And with with the choke attachment system that you've got, mm-hmm. device, so you pretty much go with any, you put it on any shotgun. Yeah. Yep. Right? Yep. Yeah. Any 12 gauge, right? Yeah. Any 12 gauge. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the really cool thing about it. And, and that was, you know, it's, Availability is really important, and so we want our customers, to, you know, the, every time they ask, can, can I run it on this? Yep. But what about the choke? Or you don't make it. Well, we'll make it for you. Don't worry. Send send in your barrel. We'll make a custom one for you. Yeah. So we got, we got fans out here. Oh, yeah. 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 We, get, we get some we get some followers come yeah. by every now and again. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, this is this is pretty sweet. I'm, I'm digging what you guys are laying down here with the JK Armament. If people want to go check this out, they can go to your website. Have you got it up now? Is it yep. posted? Is it going to be available for sale? So the the the, the shotgun can is exclusive to Silencer Shop. If you go to our website, jkarmament.com, there'll be a link, honestly, on the on the product page. But to you can go. also go to Silencer Shop to get it. Okay. So we, we're running an exclusive with that, I think, for the next 60 days. Okay. But if they want to see the gun porn, they go to your website. There's pictures yes. Or Instagram. Instagram. Instagram, follow us at JK Armament. Um and you, I mean, people are seeing it everywhere because we're we're attacking. We got an influencer army. We're getting it out. So nice. Yeah, yeah feel, it's pretty cool. Feel free to uh, do some stuff with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's get weird. Yeah, let's, I keep saying that. Let's get Frankie. Let's get yeah. Get Frankie with it. Uh, Maybe like weird like that guy. There's shut some, up, hippie. There's some. <laughs> there's some. Uh, the guy's wearing a cape that says "Shut up, hippie." That's hilarious. <laughs> there are some characters here at the NRA. I oh, love yeah. it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm cooped up here, so I haven't had a chance to walk around yet. Have you been around? Not really. This yeah. is the first Checking time I got out. out of the booth. Thank you. I understand you. Trump's here. Like Donald Trump? That's what I heard, yeah. So, were you at NRA last year? Uh, no, I did not make it last Dude, year. Dude, 
Uh, was it crazy? Oh, the protesters. Oh, well, I think they're that? here, too. Yeah, I saw a sign coming in. It said, uh, NRA kills kids. It's like, what? No. Yeah. They did that at, um, they didn't say NRA, but they did something about guns kill kids at SHOT Show. Yeah. Going to the range day. Yeah. They had, like, three miles of these signs. Uh, oh, that yeah, was ridiculous. It's annoying. It's a waste um, of money. Yeah. It, <laughs> waste of time. Everybody knows better. All these people just out there protesting because they live off the system, right? Yeah. And they, they don't have jobs. They got time to go out there and yell and scream. And Well, they, you know, they get paid by these multi-billionaires that are trying to push their agenda for these. But we're not going to talk politics on here. We're no. T- we're talking yeah. silencers, baby. So, yeah. So uh, what did you bring here for the show and tell that I'm holding here? That is the CCX 9mm. The I would CCX say 9mm. This is like an inch and a quarter, maybe? Yeah. That looks like six inches to me. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Wait, let me do this and I get an extra half inch. That's a cool can. I would say that's the, probably the most popular suppressor this year. Yeah. Wow. So, it's very lightweight. It's very small. This is a nine millimeter? Yep, it comes with five baffles. We market it because it's purpose built for concealed carry. Um, 1.2 ounces in your hand right now. So wow. it's booster free. Which boosters are a failure point, and they're finicky. Uh, so just throw it on there, on your handgun. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. And, and what's what's the uh, the price range on this? That's three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Yep, yep. Wow. And what kind of decibels do we get? With this? So, now obviously that's not going to be Hollywood quiet, but the practical purpose of that suppressor, it does the job. It takes the bite off. It, God forbid you ever needed it. Sure. Uh, in a concealed carry situation, um, it's it's going to be a game changer for you. Um, I actually can shoot. I shoot that without ears. I pack it full of Vaseline. I <laughs> no, see that. Yeah. Uh, uh, so it you can run it dry. Your secret stash right here. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can run it dry. Uh, we recommend throwing in an ablative to keep it quiet, quieter. Yeah. So but it, it'll it comes with five baffles. Five baffles. Yep. So you can have up to five baffles in it. Yep. It's not going to be one of your burn it down cans. You're not going to throw it on a sub gun and go nuts. Yeah. This is a you know we 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 say I don't know maybe a it's more 30, of a personal carry self yeah, defense thirty rounds let it cool to ambient temperature and then go again. Okay. So but this is I mean honestly they I would recommend this for my wife right you sure know, if she ever had to do it and pop off around it's going to scare the crap out of her and drop the gun right yeah. but with this on it it's going to take that edge off could we pop this on uh would you think like a carbine a nine millimeter carbine would it still it still would run good but you just need to be careful with it right yeah so i was thinking because you know, we're at caltech the you know the sub 2000 that they have yeah i'd like to check that, that out. would look really cool on yeah. the yeah, and, and again, you just just keep that in mind with but the fire schedule. But looks are, you know, whether it's functional or not. That's, right. You know, that's what we got to go for. Yeah, the practical aspect of it. Um, and then people, some people, the trolls that we were talking about before. Right. Oh, well, you know, it's only quiet if you have, you run Vaseline with it. Well, listen, we had to make some sacrifices for the material so you didn't have booster, right? We wanted yeah. it lightweight. There's give and take with every, you know, every design. And it was good and enough for the seals. You're going to go that small. The seals. So the beginning. The seals are digging that. So, phase one of this project was actually with Gemtech. Okay, Jake Kunski was the head of R and D at Gemtech back during the glory days before they sold to Smith and Wesson. Ron Martinez was the CEO and owner. He's the one who sold it to Smith and Wesson. Okay. He's our president. Okay. So, that was actually a project that got taken off after they sold it. After the company sold to Smith and Wesson, when Jake partnered with uh, Ron, that's when they brought that back. So that concept, that people may remember back in '95, the Aurora was developed by Gemtech, and the purpose for it was actually um, for the Air Force. Okay. The uh, pilots, when they eject over enemy lines, they had their Beretta, right. two mags, and then two Auroras two. Is what was the concept. Auroras. Okay. The Aurora, you can only get about 50 rounds through it. It's comprised of wipes and a gel, and then you throw it in the garbage. It's right? awesome. But one made of, to be disposable. Right. One of the requirements was it needed to be light enough to not need a booster. 
for the military. So there's a little give and take there. So that 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 should squash any trolls that are like, oh, it's not Hollywood <laughs> quiet. You got to run it wet. Yeah. Well, it's a there sweet can. Go. It's a sweet can. Throw some Vaseline on it. Yep. And you're all set. Yeah, yeah, that is that is sweet. I dig that. And I pack it full too. I'm not shy. Like I, <laughs> I'll break this open. Cake it in there. So he's unscrewing the. I'll break open the cap off of and it, and I'll literally go into the Vaseline and scoop it in there, just and like then, a spoon. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> just finger it in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we we recommend you could you, you know poking a hole through so you can see daylight, but I go nuts. <laughs> Uh, figuratively yeah. and literally. Yeah. I'm digging that. That's yeah. that's probably one of the smallest cans I've seen. We need to get you one. I love it. Yeah, they're cool. And now, actually, here's another cool thing. You throw the, take the end cap off and then uh, throw a 22 end cap on there. And it, oh, so you it got could be a 22 can, too. So you got different end caps on yep. it, too. Okay. Yep. Nice. Yep. What what adapters do you have? Which adapters? Just that? Yeah, just those two. That's yeah. all you need, really, yeah. for, the, for the pistol. Yep. I'm digging that. The other thing that's really cool about JK is you don't need any special tools for any of their suppressors. So I got some more here. Look at here. We got a 155 family. So the way the nomenclature works, you got 105 family. Stands for the diameter. 1.05 okay. inches around. 155 is 1.55 inches around. And then our new shotgun can is 195. So 1.95 inches around. Okay. That's where that starts. Right there, you're holding the SBRX. That thing is sweet. It's a 30 cal can. The really cool thing about the way Jake's designed these is he went after a deep tone. You know, different cans sound differently, right? Their pitch is different based right. off of material, design, all that good stuff. And then obviously, host weapon, um, caliber, what you're shooting through it. So that SBRX is, it's like. Do these unscrew? Yes. Okay. So you can, you can go short with it. You can size it. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's like a dropping a melon into dirt. It's a deep thud. On a, that on a five five six platform or seven six two, that that shines. On oh, a, I bet this run great on an AK. Oh man! And the other great thing about it is is the mitigation with gas. Every time I introduce someone to that can, like I was on uh, at Demolition Ranch with Matt Carricker. He shot that, and he was like, holy crap, I'm getting no gas. Yeah. It's beautiful. So you could add more baffles to it, right? No, so the lovely ATF, you got to buy it in its configuration. Oh, uh, right? okay. So you, you can shorten it, but if you were to add baffles to it, then that's technically illegal, so I wouldn't do that. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's got to be sold as is, right? So like that full length. Uh-huh is as high as you can go so theoretically if i were to add baffles to this yeah then they'd get pissed but <laughs> no i'm not i'm talking about the performance of the oh yeah oh <laughs> i see yeah yeah no we've experimented with that with like the rim fire cans. Going with this? Yeah. yeah like we we did uh with the 22 we made an extra long one yeah 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 it's fun yeah i bet it is so this is called the sbrx sbrx is the 30 cal yep and we got so this is your burn it down, right? This full auto rated. That's what we suggest. I mean, people are loving that for their five five six platforms, and that again, that's that's a beautiful thing. You can go long, short, middle, K minus if you want. Yeah. And that's like that's the other JK's. What JK is doing is giving the consumer the opportunity. You can modify your rifle a thousand ways, and being stuck with a fixed length can can be kind of annoying, right? So like yeah. you've got a rifle that you've already done a short barrel build for it and you got your can maybe you want to run it long but maybe you also want to run it really short right there you go or you got you want to run it long on a different rifle mm -hmm. you run it short on your cqb exactly dig yeah. it yeah dig it this is the rcx this is our rifle caliber system caliber rifle caliber system excuse me rifle caliber system yeah that thing's beautiful and now that one's purpose built for um, it's gonna be a different type of firing schedule, right? So this has got the additional baffles in that. Yeah, digging that. And the firing schedule, like I said, it'll be a little different. Um, that one's purpose built for your precision shooting, and it sounds beautiful on a 308, 65 Creedmoor, you name it. So that one's a fun one. That one's probably my favorite. I'm more of a precision shooting type guy. Yeah. 
I'm actually two extremes. It's like precision shooting or breacher. <laughs> He's like, like kick there's down, no like in between. Yeah, kick down doors. Kick down the doors to run up to the roof and precision yeah. shoot yeah. your ass. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. And then Dig we it. got our PCX. So, so are all your um, rifle cans uh, adjustable like this? Yes. You do the yeah, our rates? whole system is, is modular. Or okay. mis- in modular. our term, mission configurable. Mission configurable. Yeah. There we go. So depending on the mission, and why you have this? your host. That's our PCX. So this is a 9 mil can for concealed carry. Practical. Yeah. And then for the burnt down boys that want to throw it, you can throw it on your handgun, right? You're going to need a, the booster and piston. Sure. Um, but the burn it down boys for your PCCs, that's that's the can you want. It is amazing. Run it fast and yep. accurate. And again, and short quiet. or long, you choose the length. And what's the uh, registered part of this? Right, right there. This right here. Yep. So if anything happens to this, you can replace this and not have to yep. go through. And we won't anything ask why. Happens to your baffles. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Very nice. Yep. Pretty cool. Is it lifetime warranty? Unlimited, unconditional lifetime. No questions asked. Twenty-four hour to forty-eight hours. We'll send a new one back to you. Yeah. Very nice. Yep. Um, yeah. So we. I mean, we've got a can for just about everything. A whole lineup. Those are just the fan favorites. Are these uh, are these fairly new? Uh, October technically of last year. Okay, so yeah, so very new. So still, still very new. Yep. And then the shotgun can is brand new. Brand new. Yeah, brand and, spanking new. And so brand wise, we're new. The thing is, though, is we've got experts that have been in the industry since 1976. The godfather of suppressors, Phil Dater, this bad boy right there. Yeah. Um, Doctor Dater. Who founded Gemtech? He started developing uh, suppressors in '76. So, and he's on the JK squad, like oh, I nice. said earlier. So, so he's behind some of these designs here. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, and Jake Kunski, he's been in the industry for a long time. He's got quite the resume as well. Uh, with respect to development, he's 19th Group Special Forces Group Head Armor. He's actually the first guy to ever put a minigun on a Humvee. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. That's um, a pretty neat, neat claim to fame. Yep. Uh, Maxim PDX. You know that gun? Yep. He, yeah. There was a picture of it over there. He designed that. Really? He, he's on the patent for that. He, he developed that gun in Idaho. Bruno, Idaho. Okay. Um, a number of Nemo rifles he did. Yep. Um, so, so, yeah, we're a new brand, but we're, we're not new to the to the scene. Right. We know, like, Jake New is, brand, but yeah. you got you got some old hats, experienced yep. people that are behind it. Yep. Behind the brand. A- Evan's taking some pictures here. What are you... Oh, okay. We got our shotgun can, too, if you want to take that off there. Oh, yeah, I want to see let's that. See, let's uh, let's pull that off. I'm afraid my headphones are going to come off. No, let's see the shot. Bring the shotgun over okay. here. Bring the whole thing. Oh. I there. didn't know you had it here. Oh, yeah, I brought it. I could have been finger-fucking this while you're talking about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is bad. <coughs> So take that off the, the top there and feel how light that is. Right there, that's 9.3 ounces. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah, that's super light. Yeah. So, I mean, it adds really nothing to the weight of your shotgun. It's going to be a game changer uh, with respect to those hunters out there, um, the winged hunters especially. Oh, yeah. And the tactical application right now is, is, is pretty cool too. And then this one is also uh, mission specific. Mission configurable. Configurable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the buzzword. Mission impossible. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the two cans we suggest our consumers to run wet from a practical standpoint are the CCX as yeah. well as the shotgun. So using an ablative like a petroleum jelly, we coat the baffles. You don't. You don't need to. Recoat it as often with this. It's about 50 rounds, I would say. With the shotgun? It's roughly two boxes of shells. Okay. And that'll run, you know, like I said, I think I already said it, right? The, the 12-gauge buck, bird, um, slug. You can't so, say it enough. Yeah. You can't say it. Keep saying it. Yeah. Keep saying it. I love it. Yeah, that's... that. Uh, so the exclusive launch, we sold out of our entire... Well, the inventory they had within two hours. We've literally... De- we're dedicating most of our machines almost all of our machines in Idaho to making that can because they're flying. We are in Idaho? Yep. Okay. Yep. There's a lot of great companies in Idaho. Yeah. The Buck Knives. Buck Knives, yeah. Coeur d'Alene. Is, is Genesis Arms. 
Yeah. Is Idaho. Occam well, Defense is in Idaho. Uh-huh. Um, ah, PWS. Another. Yeah. Primary Weapon Systems. Primary Weapon Systems. Nemo. That's right. Yeah, Nemo. Nemo. Yeah. There's a lot of good companies yeah. there. So if people want to get this, they go to Silencer Central, or not or Silencer Ooh, Shop. You said a bad word. I said word. a bad word. <laughs> I was looking at it because they're right there. Silencer <laughs> Shop. Yeah, silencer Shop, yeah. Uh, they make some decent silencers, too, yeah. suppressors. Yeah. Um, I don't think they got a shotgun one, though. Do they? Nope. They can't have that. So you guys <laughs> have... Say the name again because you got all these. That's the SGX 12G. SGX 12G. 195, which is the diameter, 1.95. And what's the price point? So the one you got there is our Versa X 12G. Yep. That's 599 Oh. This is awesome. That's not bad at all. The long one, which is the SGX 12G, it's got, it's about a foot long. A little bit longer. A little longer than a foot. Yeah. Is um, 899 Okay. Yeah. And it's, and it's also, you can. Yep. Configure yep. it. Same can. It's just longer. I was say, why don't you just sell one can? Right. And then people can. Well, we just wanted the. We wanted to not pigeonhole people on the price. Right? Yeah. So like, if you're if you're a budget guy, it still sounds great at that length. The Versa X sounds fantastic. Yeah. Um, but if you didn't have the eight ninety nine in your budget, you give them an option to have it run it short. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Well, I'm digging it, man. Yeah. And yeah. your website, jkarmont.com? Dot com, yep. And on the grams? The grams, yep. You can see me. I do a lot of the videos there. Okay. Uh, we just started a series called FUD Busters. FUD Busters. Actually, it's, your audience will love this. There's, there's a, there is a FUD science out there that people are saying, you do not need to clean your 30 cal cans. And it's funny because I was we were talking with um, Mike Jones, Go Grantham about this. He had a Surefire can. Yeah. He thought everybody knew that you need that they need to be cleaned yeah. and serviced. No, most people. Uh, there's actually a lot of companies. I won't name any names that are saying you don't need to clean your thirty out thirty cal can. It's it, it's self cleaning. You know. How's that? How Just, is it? I don't really know. Like you know, it. Every time you shoot it, it Just pushes the carbon buildup out. Shoots it out. Yeah. Because some kind of lining they've got on right. the inside. And you know. I don't know. Grantha, Mike, he, he throws a lot of lead down range. Yeah. And his, his surefire that he had, um, he there was so much carbon buildup, it not only affects the performance, the sound performance, but the weight. Yeah. And eventually you're gonna have a baffle strike. It's gonna happen. Because yeah, you know, you're losing your diameter. Correct. It's getting shorter, smaller, tighter. So for us, that was our first episode of FUD Busters. Do you need to clean your thirty cal can? And we busted that. And U.S. Border Patrol's here. You just walked through. Oh, wow. They're looking for, the they're looking for me. <laughs> yeah, they're looking for livestock agents. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, so you cracked this open, and that's how we were able to prove that. This one is not dirty, but when you look at the baffles, right. the carbon buildup was significant. Yeah. Um, and so, and it takes quite a bit to clean it off. So what do you guys recommend on cleaning your cans? I mean... We don't really have anything specific. Uh, soap and water, like dish soap and water. <laughs> yeah, well, the, I, there's a there's a ton of different ways you can. Um, I, don't I, know. I like to hear everybody's you yeah know, how they how they do it. Yeah, because everybody's got a little something different. Yeah, yeah, a little different way. Yeah, I I I mean again I I haven't need needed to. It's going to take a while, right? You don't. With a thirty cal can, the carbon buildup it's you're gonna have to be, throw a lot of lead down range, but eventually you yeah. will need to or clean it. You just it. got some crappy ammo that Yeah. Really Take a wire ammo. brush to it, that's what I would do. Or if you're shooting, you know, you're shooting the AK. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's gonna get dirty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cause that's what I would put it on. I'd throw it on an AK. Yeah, I'm a big are you an AK fan? Oh, I yeah. love AK. So we do this this show because you're not familiar with yeah. with talking lead. It's called the AK Corner once a month. And that's what we dedicate the show to. We've been doing that for five years now. Very cool. We're in our fifth year of the AK Corner. I love it. Talking about AK huh. Corner. So maybe we get you on and talk AK sometime. I would. I would be fun. Uh, do, have you had Pappas on? Because he's a big yeah. AK fan. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Wolverine's a bitch and can. Yep. That knurling on there is sexy, too. <laughs> he's sexy. He's, he Pappas is sexy. Pappas is just sexy. He is sexy. Yeah. Yeah. You just say the word Mike Pappas. And yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. you all tingly inside. Yeah. <laughs> that guy is he is a national treasure that needs to be protected. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that one hundred percent. There needs to be bulletproofing around him. Yeah. 
Yeah, he should have his own security. <laughs> like the Pope. Their booth was really cool. Did you see it? I haven't been there yet. No. Oh, you got to see it. The Mike's Muffler Shop. And that's, they, that's what I heard. Yeah. Mike Muffler Shop. Yeah. So it looks like a garage. We had the guys from Atlas Defense on uh, earlier. Okay. And uh, they were they were talking about that. Yeah. I was like, is that a new company? Yeah. They're like, no, it's it's Pappas. Yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah. That was that was a. I think the guy over there is his name's Keith, their marketing guy. That was a, that was a strong move on his play. That yeah. was a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it. Yeah. I dig it. So let's talk about Rich real quick before you go. I know sure. you got to get back to the booth there. No, I'm I'm really enjoying the seat. So, so you take your time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell our listeners about about you and how you got involved in the, the firearms industry. Oh man. Um. Jeez. What's your background? Military, law nope. enforcement? No military. I did pursue a career in law enforcement. That wasn't the route that I wanted to take. It, 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 uh, my marketing career kind of blossomed. Uh, I was in competitive bodybuilding. I played football in college, got done with that, needed something to compete in. Was a big fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold. Arnold. Who yeah. is it? I mean, who, who didn't grow up a fan of Arnold? To right. To the dude's senile now. You know. Yeah, he says dumb things. What do you mean now? Well, <laughs> he's always said stupid things. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But now it's like anti American things. Oh, yeah. yeah. Before, he was kind of like, kind of an American icon, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, he was all American. All about America. Yeah. So that's after, after, um, after college, I, I wanted to get into the fitness world, so I did that. Worked at bodybuilding.com uh, for some years. Got to work with Arnold. Got to work with a lot of... Did you do competitive bodybuilding? I did. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Went up there with the, the spray tan and all that good stuff. Nice. That's how I that's how I convinced my wife to marry me. <laughs> with the spray tan? Yeah. Now I got dad bod. <laughs> <laughs> the gun industry dad bod. There you go. Yeah. So... That's, yeah. why, that's why you wear the vest. Yeah, know. cover it. Yeah. Yeah, shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Actually, I compete in Highland Games now. That's my that's my, my new thing. Highland Games? Highland Games. Highland? What is, Scottish like Highland Games. The, the tossing the kegs yep. and, and that kind of stuff? Yeah. So that's like strongman stuff. It is, yeah. So, and then I don't have to worry about being super lean because weight moves weight. You got to be big. Yeah, so. yeah. That's a, fun, that's a fun sport. Yeah. It's if very you stay healthy too. doing it. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of injuries there is doing yeah. that shit because you're you're having to move quick that heavy shit around. Yeah, I was I was training for it. Uh, How's your back? Back in when I lived in I used to live in Dallas, and I I actually tore my pec major type two ch- oh. tear. Yeah, I was on the bench press. I had about that had a nice big purple. Oh, it was bad. Yeah, I had about three hundred fifty pounds on the bench. It wasn't that much. I was in my third set, and I was lifting alone, which was not good. Um, tore tore the pec. Type two tear is the pectoralis major comes completely off the tendon. Oh, so it's very hard to do you a surgery. That, yeah, it's almost impossible. There's only some surgeons that can do it, and I, so mine's still not attached. Is it not? Yeah. How yeah. long has it been? It's been almost three years now, and it still isn't. I can't. I can't really do push-ups because of it. Yeah, I can imagine. So, it sucks. Are you Are you planning on having that? Fixed I, at some point in time? I gotta find a surgeon that can, and I almost feel like it might be too late to do it. Uh, um, but yeah, the past f- its expiration point, right? Yes. So that's kind of where I like I, I went. I did some contract security. Uh, that was fun. Um, some of the I had I, I did security for the Seahawks for a little bit too, which was Seattle fun. Seahawks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, out there. I got to meet Howie Long. Oh, dude, that Howie cool, Long dude. is like my ultimate favorite football player yeah he that dude's got the biggest hands i've ever seen is he a big dude yeah it's like a catcher. i've never seen him in person but he's he's a he's he's got a big head i don't know he's like a superhero always always followed him in college you know he's at notre dame yeah and then when he went pro yeah followed him through his pro career because i'm not like a team guy i like players yeah like individual players until tennessee got a team finally yeah you know the titans yeah the Oilers, yeah, the Oilers, the Tennessee man. Oilers, yeah. Um, but yeah, Howie Long was always was a favorite of mine. Well, they they put me on a detail. They were like, I was actually kind of pissed because I was on the field, and then they they brought me back to these trailers outside of the stadium. And they're like, you're gonna stand right here, and there's got to be some guys that are gonna come out. I'm not gonna tell you who it is, but make sure no one touches them. And I was like, okay. And um, so if I don't know who they are, how it, am I gonna know? That's that's what I said. It was really <laughs> strange. And so I, I was standing in this, like, gate, 
And all of a sudden, this massive hand lands on my shoulder. And I was like, what the hell? And I looked, and it was Howie Long. And it, his fingers were, I mean, this dude's hands were enormous. Yeah. Now you're uh, a big dude. Yeah. Yeah. So to have, you know. To, to, yeah, to, to say that his hands were big. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's an impressive human being. Yeah. You know Howie Long. Terry Bradshaw, too. That guy's hilarious. I got to oh, meet him. Oh, yeah. He's a hoot. Yeah. So, yeah, I did the, that's kind of. Um, that's so, kind of like personal security kind of got into that? Yeah. Thing. And I always had a passion for, for firearms through that and hunting, obviously. Yeah. Um, and where is it you're from? Where do you live? I'm in Utah. Okay. Yep. So, you're in Utah. Yep. That's actually, so I moved from Dallas. Is that how you met Evan? Who? Evan. 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 Oh, yeah. Who? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, who? I thought you were talking about, I thought for some reason, I knew, I know Evan Hafer over at Black Rifle. Black okay. Rifle Coffee. So that's what I thought yeah. you were talking about. Um, but yeah, no, I moved from Dallas to Utah to work at Dead Air because Dead Air is in Utah. Yeah. And then so is Silencer Co. So I left Silencer Co. Then went, went to, or sorry, to Dead, Dead Air to, to Silencer Co. So, but and I, now you're with JK. Yep. And they're in Idaho, so I work remote. Um, we, do, we do a lot of our marketing stuff. There's another guy that I work with in Utah on yeah. content and all that good stuff. Are you doing the, um, um, what's that big event coming up? The Utah. Yeah, Shootall. You Shootall. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yep, yep, I'll be there. I knew it was some kind of. Yeah. Have you ever been to that? I haven't. It's they invited me at um, at SHOT Show, so I may I may come. It's a cool event. It's coming up, right? It's worth going to. Yeah. They jump out of helicopters and there's, you know, a full auto bay. They're always yeah. bringing out cool toys. I just want to go to Utah. Dude, Utah's amazing. Yeah, that's why I hear. I tell people it sucks. Don't move here. So, so they don't come? Don't move smart. to Utah. Yeah, it's super cold. It's Unlike Joe Rogan, who's yeah. told everybody and their mother to move to. And everyone and, is. And all the liberals are moving to <laughs> to Texas yeah. now. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. 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 Leave, leave it to them to ruin it. Yeah, I wanted to. I was one, like, you know, I had a lot of family, especially on my wife's side, too, where we're military guys. Um, it's just one of those notches in my belt that I never did. Yeah, same here. Yeah. yeah. And being in the gun industry, I feel like you have tattoos, you wear the gear, people just assume. Right. But, yeah, that's uh, that was one one of the things. I, I don't necessarily regret not doing it, but it was an opportunity. I'm digging that tat, though, with uh, the, the skeleton. Yeah. So um, Evan's not here, so I can't get a picture of it. But, uh, yeah, on his hand, I, I dig that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I haven't got a tat yet because I haven't really found anything that – I would want to have on my body permanently yet. You may. Well, I'm not ruling it out. Yeah. I just there just hasn't been you know, they, that they thing. They do. They do hurt. That thing. Yeah. I yeah. hate. I hate when guys say, "Oh, tattoos don't hurt. You're a pussy." No, no, they hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're sticking needles in your yeah you know, down to your bones. So. I got. A, I got a neck tattoo. Mike. Mike picked on me about I it. Bet actually, that hurt like a mofo, didn't it? Up here on the skull. When it, when oh, the you needle, got one on your skull. So it's like up. It I was goes looking up. at the neck one over yeah, here. Yeah, this you one's got, not bad. You got a shield. That's, this one wasn't bad. It's a weird sensation. It looks, it looks newer. Uh, it's about a year old. Okay. Yeah, it still looks fresh. Papa says it's, uh, my wife wants me to be less marketable. <laughs> we, <laughs> <laughs> she loves my tattoos, so I, I I do it for her. There you go. Yeah. 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 You got a reason to do it. Yeah. yeah. But to answer your question uh, about what got me into the industry, I think it was mainly social media. I started building my own brand. Yeah. And then... Um, I got invited to a shoot in Texas um, uh, called the Texas Range Day. Jack Callahan, Whiskey Savage Media, do you know who that is? Mm-mm. He'd be a good guy to come on the show. Yeah, love to have him. He's a cool dude. So he 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 brought me out as a shooter, and that's actually where I met Pappas. Out at that event? Yeah. So doing gun bunny stuff out there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of what got me into the industry full time. Okay. Yeah. Before it was more just, you know, here and there. I did, I've done plenty of stuff with Springfield Armory, Henry Rifles, uh, actually Premier Body Armor. I've had um, uh, Anthony on the show, Imperatu. Oh, yeah. The owner of Henry. Yeah. 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 He's That's been cool. On, he's been on the show. Yeah, They're a, doing that some was cool a stuff. great interview I had with him. Really? Yeah, that was one of, one of my favorites. Did you see the revolvers they're coming out with? Uh, no. Yeah. I think they just posted about it yesterday. They got them here? I don't know. They should. If That'd they be silly if they didn't. It. Yeah, yeah. I want. I want to say someone told me they weren't bringing guns to. To uh, to the NRA, the NRA which would, would, would be weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I saw that they're they're staying at the same hotel I'm staying at. So yeah, I know they're here. And the Homesteader. Have you seen the Homesteader? Uh, I think their carbine that they came yeah. out with. That yeah. thing's sweet. Yeah, it's very nice. Our PCC on that is oh, 
So Sounds that's another so thing. You know, the the lever action has has a been revitalized. Yes. You know, it's had a resurgence since these companies have come out with the the hand guards. Yeah. You know that you can put on it. The Ranger the, Point the pick Precision. Rails and yeah, I'll show you the one I did for. I I got the four ten. That's what I did right there. Oh, look at that. With Ranger Point Precision. That's nice. Their system is pretty cool. That's a 410? Mm-hmm. That's cool. That's their axe. It's called the Henry axe. axe. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that was a fun build. Yeah, since uh, you know, Midwest has come out with um, oh, some yeah. adapters that you can put in your hand guards. Um, Mad Pig Customs. Does that's a the bunch one. Yeah, I've yeah. had them on the show, Mad Pig Customs. He does a beautiful kinda, job. Kind of really... You know that's yeah. what really brought attention, to, I guess, to the yeah that lever you can action. Do this to the lever action now, and the, then the, the lever tarred. action prices have gone. Oh yeah, the roof. yeah. And then uh, who, uh, Ruger's getting to the scene, right? Or I would assume. Yeah. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. Who was a? Uh, gosh. What was the brand? You got Rossi. You got Rossi, Winchester. Yeah. Winchester. Henry Marlin. I love shooting lever actions. They're fun. Yeah, they they are fun. Yeah, but you know, trying to get thirty thirty ammo. Yeah, yeah, it's just near impossible. Yeah, man. I got the uh, what is it? The Henry model, um, their big boy model X and three fifty seven, mm-hmm. and shooting it suppressed, especially with thirty eight special. Oh, that's man. a lot of fun. That's a treat. Yeah, yeah, and I I did the custom job too with the uh, Ranger point on that, so it's all tack targeted. All tacked out. out. I love yeah. It. I yeah. Love it. yeah, I, I got to get. I've got two. Uh, Winchesters and Mad Pig at the time wasn't doing Winchesters. I don't know if he's still huh. is doing. He was just doing Marlins and uh, Henrys. Cool, I think so. That's what, I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah, yeah. he does. Like I, like I said, he does an incredible job. Oh yeah, it's fabulous. I need I need to get me one of his. And of course Costa, you know, running his his pics and videos of him running them. And Costa works doing with us. classes. You know, he works with us. No, he oh, he he, he was uh, integral in our R and D. Oh, okay. Yeah, he runs a lot of our product. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I love Costa. I went through one he of his... He seems like a good dude. I've never met him. You should have him on. I would love to have him on. <laughs> Talks more than me. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did one of his courses, the lever action course. Yeah, what did you think about it? It was dope. Yeah. I, I came out pretty proficient with that thing. I didn't think I ever really need the, like the necessity of it. Yeah. It wasn't really there. I, I did it more for the content. Sure, and like because there and was just for the the joy and love of lever action. Exactly, you know? yeah. But yeah. it take it, you know it takes that, you know that lever action that you've had sitting in your closet for you know fifteen twenty years that, you know there's only so much you can do to it. Now you've had this next level of coolness to it. Right, makes you want to get out there and enjoy it even more. I it, know some people are like purists. You get the purists right. that you know. Grandpa, how dare you? Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, that's a that's an heirloom. Yeah, that's a golden boy. Don't touch that. <laughs> No, yeah, the uh, there's a lot of the way you handle a lever action from a safety perspective. That one of the biggest things I gleaned from his class was that it's a lot different than like if you're doing a move and shoot drill with your AR and you change it to a lever action. Yeah, there's a lot more things to consider with respect to you know how you're holding the weapon and operating it, especially around other people. Yeah, and so that was one of the cool things that. You know, and it's good. You should be, if you have a gun, you should be proficient with it. Absolutely. You know, even if it's a safe queen and you're only bringing it out to have fun with on holidays. You need to know how to use it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Responsibly, safely. Yeah. Right. Like you said. Yep. Kudos to Costa. Hey, on that. I was going to ask you while we're here, you know, we are at Caltech's booth and, uh, you know, they just came out with the, um, the KSG 410. Have you seen it yet? No. You haven't seen it yet? No, I want to see it, touch it, feel it, okay. play with it. I'm, I'm going to. Evan. Evan. <coughs> Can you get us a 410? Please. So I want to get I want to get your reactions on it. Okay. And, and your opinions on okay. it. Okay. You know, are you familiar with their KSG the 12? Yeah. 12 gauge? We we have one. We need to get a mount for it. Okay. Cuz it's it's exterior threaded, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so we need to figure out. We're working on that. that. Okay. Yeah. No, that's what I was going to ask is if that can would work on the the KSG, but here it is. Here's oh. the uh, KSG 410. It's light. Super lightweight. Dual tube. Yeah, this is awesome. So you can run 5, 5 plus 1, 7, 7 plus 1. It depends on the length that you go. You can run all the different shots through it. Yeah, that's sweet. Oh. 
Ambi. Ambi. For yep. those, for those lefties. That's right. Are you a lefty for real? I am not a lefty. So why do they call you that? It's a long story. <laughs> I'm sure you've covered it on the podcast. A few you? times. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll tell you off here. Yeah. The listeners are tired of hearing about it. Huh. So he's ra- he's racking it now. So you got the index finger. That's that's sexy. That Release. Does, yeah. Huh. Think, of, think about going dual with those. Oh yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? Be cool as shit. Yeah. And then you got the rail up here. I'm trying. I'm trying to like do this and stay close to this, but also I don't want to lose my headphones. And my hat's gonna pop <laughs> off. Don't want to lose your costume. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, we need to suppress that too. That, you said four ten. That's yeah. right. It's four ten. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Yep. So you said the the what you're running into the issue on the the KSG twelve gauge. Yeah, I think it's an exterior exterior threading. Threaded. Yeah. So we're working on a mount. I know that for a fact because we just posted about it uh, the other day, and people were inquiring because um, that's a popular system. Where did we? Where, yeah, here you go. So we have one, and we're working on it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be awesome. I know Atlas has got one for it now. Uh, they've had one for a long time uh, for that. Yeah, that'll be fun to play with. But yeah, shooting a 410 suppressed. That's like to me, it's like the, sh- the 22 of shotguns. You know. Yeah. And it, it would be super quiet. Absolutely. There are I mean, a lot there's of fun. hardly any recoil in it. You know, it's, right. It's great for you know the smaller framed individual, females, kids. Yeah. It's great to, to uh, kill with small Birds. critters. Yeah. Small little furry Varmint. animals. <laughs> Varmints. Yeah. yeah. Eradication. Yeah. yeah. Varmint eradication. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's just a fun gun to shoot. Yeah. Thanks for showing me that. Yeah. I'm about to get one. Hey, Caltech. Hook Thank a brother you. up. I, I, I know a guy. Yeah. I think I'll probably make that happen. I actually have a, a good friend of mine. Um, oh, gosh. What's his Instagram? He's going to kill me if he hears this. Oh. We'll get it. We'll get it. What's yeah. he do? What's so he do? He, he does custom uh, builds. Okay. He's got a, He's a. He's a good old Rifle. redneck Texas boy. Okay. And um, he showed up. Gosh, at one of the range events when I was at Dead, Dead Air and gifted me a custom uh, lever action twelve gauge. Oh damn! That he built out. It's, it was a replica from Terminator Two. Oh sweet. So I, that to give you some context. Meeting and working with Arnold back when I was at bodybuilding.com was a big deal for me. Oh. I mean, everyone's a fan of Arnold, but I, I read his books. Like, I was a big fan of Pump him. Pumping Iron. Pump Did and you watch Iron. that? Oh, so funny. That is a hilarious what movie. Is, I love what's it. What's the best line? <laughs> he freaking, he gave Lou Ferrigno such a hard oh. time, man. Lou, they, uh, Lou does not like Arnold still to this day. Yeah. I'm yeah. surprised he didn't ever commit suicide. Either. I've worked with Lou. He Because Arnold was very psychological. Yeah, you know he he had a plan. He would get into the yeah. other bodybuilders' heads. Yeah, Louis, and, and just make them feel like Louis. Shit. I watch you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, we had we he was at our booth when I was at bodybuilding.com at the Olympia one year, and people were in line for like four hours just uh, to get a picture with Lou. I don't doubt it. And the people that would come up and have like a. Uh, a book like one of Arnold's book from like Pumping Iron or something like that. I, he would get really pissed. <laughs> would he really? Yeah, he wouldn't give he wouldn't an autograph. It? Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I we'll, met him we'll at a Comic Con. Really? One time. When one he was year. the Hulk. Well, it is years after he'd already done the Hulk. Uh huh. But it it was it was probably a good ten yeah twelve years ago. Okay. It's down in Atlanta. He's still yoked. Oh yeah, he is. Yeah, he's super great shape. <laughs> he could still play the Hulk, you know, today. But I got to meet him, talk to him. Super nice dude. Yeah, I mean, he's just really down to earth guy. Yeah, he is, and he's he's a family oriented dude. His his kids are. He's really he has a tight relationship with his kids. Yeah. Um, Did you ever meet him? I, yeah, I worked with him with Lou. Yeah, and he he's it's funny because we were uh, it's not funny I'll tell you a funny story the audience will get kicked out of it <laughs> my wife didn't know he's half deaf because that's kind of why he has got that uh, the, he talks funny yeah yes. yeah I can't, I can't, I can't he's deaf uh, yeah he's, he's deaf. basically deaf yeah and you know we're at the Olympia show it's loud up in this VIP suite and I introduced 
her to him and she's talking to him like normal and he's being nice yeah. and he's like uh-huh, uh-huh. he couldn't hear a word she was saying <laughs> and I was like I leaned over and was like honey Lou's deaf you need to speak up <laughs> she started so turned beet red just Lou. so embarrassed yeah no fig no yeah <laughs> you don't call me the Hulk <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. just made a po. oh dude check this out this just I mean this is just so ironic that we're doing maybe this is why I started talking about him but so I made a post yesterday with the Kraken case. Have you seen the Kraken case yet? Uh-uh. Okay, I'm going to show you that. But... Where is that case? Oh, is it already gone? My post about the Kraken case? It's a story, so... Damn it! I hate the stories because they oh, go yeah. away. 24 hours later. 24 hours and they're gone. I'm sure... I'm sure I, here, the- I saved it right here. So it's the Gamma case. Ah, the, the, oh, there he is. It's called the Gamma case. The Hulk. Yeah, I love it. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. So I did a little, I made a little montage with the Hulk. I there. love that. I love it's the scene. It's the Lou Ferrigno Hulk. He, uh, he's trading with his dad in Pumping Oh, Island. yeah, yeah, yeah. His dad's such a nerd. <laughs> yeah. So funny. He had the most sweetest, loving, family parents. Though. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Arnold's parents, on the other hand. Well, yeah, he's from what, East, Austria. East Austria, or, you know, something like that. Very strict and ri- regim- his regimented. Dad, his dad was, I'm pretty sure, SS. He was, a, he was a police officer of some sort. Yeah, yeah, but he was also Nazi, like, SS. You think so? I'm pretty certain he was. Yeah. Uh, Arnold, his story was really crazy, man. He, he, was a, he was a tanker. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, he was a tanker in the Austrian military. He got in trouble. <laughs> I do believe that. He, he snuck out of base. I forget exactly the, all the details of the story. He writes about it in one of his books to compete in the Mr. Universe. And he won and came back, got caught, was thrown in jail. Oh, the, the, shit. The, 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 the military jail or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then they found out that he won and they were so happy about it. They changed his punishment and... Uh, to like some something in the kitchen, some kind of kitchen detail, so he could eat. Right. And then up. they then they built him. No joke. The tank brigade, whatever wherever he was going out, like in the field. Yeah. They built him custom weights and put it onto the tank so he could work out in the field. I have not heard that story. It's true. Yeah. That's it's crazy. A, it's, it's cool. So this is the the Kraken case. So oh, what's awesome. cool about it is this memory foam that you have here. Huh. So you, That's rad. You can, you can like overstuff it, right? You could like put this bottle in there like this if it was right, maybe a little, and you could close the entire. So you don't have to do cutout. And it's great for your cans. So you want a nice, safe way. That's right. That's rad. To put those two on the bottom, and then let's put this up top. Put the foam on. Just throw this. No one on kidding. There too. You can throw that on there too. Is that a t-shirt? Yeah, you can throw that on there too. And then you're like, there's no way that's going to close. Holy crap. Like, here, you got to get the phone right there. When did these drop? They're dropped. They're ready. They're available. Crackencase.com. Cases.com. I need to get one of those. And they've got rifle cases too. That's really cool. Huh. They they got a little smaller iPro kind of cases too, so. As far as like. It doesn't doesn't like and the heat the you could put a you could put yeah. a hot can on there and it's it's got some kind of ridiculous no heat re- yeah. really yeah what is it rated that's up to the a million degrees I don't know it's ridiculous that's cool you could take a can shoot it that's witchcraft and, and then take it off put it on there and it it won't melt that's that. cool and none of none of the uh, liquids I, or anything it, it retards the liquid where, where can I get one of those so, where, where can the audience get them. So they go to crankingcases.com, use the code LEADHEAD, you're going to get 15% off uh, a cranking case. But we can we can introduce you to the, That's the man cool. himself. Yeah. I'm sure we could get you one. Because that is always a pain, you know, the, the foam cutouts that come in there. Yeah. So this way you don't have to worry about it. It'll conform to anything. That is nuts. That I wish get. everyone could see that. <laughs> well, we've been, we've been pushing them for a while, so a lot yeah. of our audience has, has seen it. We've given... What five away already? 
And then we're giving one way here at NRA with a P17 with a red dot holster, five mags, um, and something else. That's cool. So uh, if you're here, come register. Come yeah. In. It'd be worth it. So, Rich, give everybody your your uh, social media where they can get in touch with you. They can follow yeah. you. Check out your awesomeness that you're doing. Yeah, my page is boring. It's just like everyone else's. <laughs> no, I do. I, uh, 50 pa- words of cowboy hat. Patriot Rich is uh, patriot.rich. But the most, most important one is JK Armament. That's where the fun yeah. stuff's happening. JK Armament. Um, we're on Twitter, too. We're actually blowing up on Twitter. Okay. Ever since Elon Musk took over. I, maybe I should get back on Twitter now. You should. And, and try it. I would. I just I had never had anything to do with it. So. Yep. Yeah. And then I got an account. YouTube. I just don't have anything to do with it. Yeah, you can YouTube. Um, I told you we we're gonna do an hour. <laughs> I'm I'm happy. This is the first. I didn't think I was gonna get to sit down today. So so thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. I appreciate you coming by. So Rich, great meeting you. Yeah. Leadheads, go and follow him. Patriot Rich. Patriot dot Rich. Yeah. Yeah. Patriot dot Rich on the grams. Yeah. And are you doing the Twitter too? Twitter? Uh, no, just Gram. You doing the TikTok? Technically, yes, but I got some cringy stuff on there, so don't follow me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good page. I, I have about... You wearing your old uh, bodybuilding Speedos? Some of it's bodybuilding. It's Richie Pump. Richie Pump. Richie Pump. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, I love it. Uh, they're gonna, uh, the comments on this one would be funny when they hear that. Richie Pump. But most importantly, like he said, go to JK Armament. Check out those cans they've got. They're fabulous. You guys are definitely going to. I mean, that, that small 9 mil can, I love that little thing. Yeah. That, that's cool. Just the cool factor of but it. But the cool factor that you can, every one of them is mission configurable. configurable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I dig that, too. Yeah. Um, But Leadheads, we're going to be back with more from the 2023 NRA here in Indy at the Lead Quarters, Caltech. Man, thanks for having me. I appreciate you taking the time to be on, man. Keith likes everything about the great outdoors. He's a lot like us. Whether we're bow hunting in the backcountry or plinking in the backyard, we want to enjoy each experience to the fullest. kel 22 caliber P-17 is Heath's go-to pistol for a good time. On the range, on the trail, and anywhere in between. Weighing in at only 14 ounces with a full magazine, its compact size makes it easy to conceal or tuck away in a small pack, pocket, or space. It comes out of the box ready with a fiber optic front sight, a threaded barrel, a Picatinny rail, and a price point for any budget. With three 16-round magazines, it's ready for hours of pure, unadulterated enjoyment. It's easy, it's affordable, it's accurate, and it's a damn sweet marvel of plinking innovation. The kel P-17. It's more bang for less buck. Okay, Leadheads, that does it for our second round of NRA interviews. Hope you enjoyed those. And like I said, more to come that you're not going to want to miss. And I promised to you that we had a big announcement. And Matt, is it okay? Can we make this announcement? Or are we still just teasing it? <laughs> and then Matt goes, what are you talking about? I'm not listening. <laughs> because I heard my name. <laughs> yeah. So the so I I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we had this giveaway that we did during NRA. You know, Parker Parker was telling you what it was in that. We had a, a P seventeen, red dot, Kraken case, yep. uh this the Keltec flashlight, which is what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> I can't remember your CPLR ninety six or whatever it's called. E R forty three. There you go. That's it. Extra mag. Bunch of mags. Great giveaway. And the winner's going to be announced May 10th. So check your email and uh, you guys will find out if you were the winner or not. Uh, but if you weren't. Wednesday, Wednesday, May 10th. Wednesday, May 10th. Coming up. Correct. May the 4th be with you. <laughs> so for, for those who were there, that was, that was for people that were in attendance. If you weren't in attendance, and I'm, I'm just going to tease it because I don't know if I can release, if, if we're going to talk about the whole thing or not. But we've got a giveaway for you, for everyone now. So this is for all the lead heads and, and everyone, um, even if you attended in our, this is for everybody. We've got another big giveaway, and this is a big giveaway. It's a huge yeah, giveaway. Yeah, this, this is a very significant giveaway. This is, uh, there's a tease right there. There's part of it. Matt's holding there it for our, our video audience. He just, uh, 
showed you the Kraken Sigma rifle case, which those are fresh out. They're new. Matt was one of the first people. Caltech was one of the first companies to get one of those. So they've had an opportunity to test it out. I don't have one yet. Um, but that is going to be part of this big giveaway. And yeah. And we're obviously going to put stuff in it. We're going to, it's so. we got to fill it up. <laughs> it, yeah. it's, a, it's a, bring that It'll case back up. over here. Bring that case back over here. It was a giant case. Hold on. Let me, uh, if you're listening, go to, go oh, to a Kraken cases.com and you can pull it up. There's a picture of it there and you can just see the enormity of this, this case that's got their memory foam. And, yeah, and I wanted to do this again on this episode because people really liked it on the last one that I did. So this is their smaller Icarus case, guys. This is the Icarus case. So you can put your iPro in this. I'm eight feet tall. So, so Matt's, Matt's 6'3", and that's how tall it is. That's how, and that, look how wide it is, too. And it's got it two really layers. Open. I can't open it. It's got yeah. two layers. It's wide. Yeah. Yeah. So what's cool Smaller about these cases, memory. and you've heard me talk about it, it's the foam that's in these cases. It's this memory foam. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I've got their iPro case here. It's called the Icarus. And I've got an egg. This is a real egg. I should have. I'll have to use my cup. But So check this out. Check this out, Parker. I think Matt, uh, Matt and Chad have already seen this, but. So I just I just closed awesome. an egg. Time for scrambled eggs. Uh, an extra large egg. It's not it's not organic, but it's one of the, it's just a f chicken egg. And look, look at that. That's awesome. Look at that. Check it out again. You want to see it again? Boop. Everyone's like, that's a fake egg. Yeah, they've actually done this, <laughs> and they've dropped them off the top of their building. Uh in Michigan. They're out of Michigan and they've opened it up and the eggs have been fine. Now I'm not going to do that here, but, and this is a real egg. It's not a boiled egg. Look, watch. Oh, now look at that. There we go. So that's a real Just egg. Put an egg in your coffee. That's my water. <laughs> no, they weren't my drink for the rest of the show, but that's okay. <laughs> it's worth it to show how cool this memory foam is. And it's, it's cut resistant. It's flame resistant up to 400 degrees. So you could put a hot uh, silencer in there and close it up and it's not going to melt this. So there's. Why would you put a. Well, now, if, you're, so you gotta, if you're at the you range and you're yourself, ready to go. So you know. But you could just throw it in that rifle case and just boom. Yeah. It's ready to go. Hot well, barrel. You're good to go. Now you got to shave off your mustache with that knife so that we know the knife's actually sharp. <laughs> it's actually sharp. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing I suck at is sharpening a knife. I am that's, no good at sharpening a knife. That's the only thing you suck at? Uh, I'm not good at it either. That's the only thing, Chad, that I suck at. <laughs> I've never had a motorcycle accident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm never going to live those down. That's that's <laughs> not true. I have. I lied. When I was younger, I used to ride the dirt bikes, and I would wreck all the time. Oh, yeah. They were made to wreck. Yeah. Those were those were fun to wipe out. So I think we should just go ahead and tell. So we're going to tell what all's included. So you saw the case. It's the, the Sigma okay. case. We're going to fill it with – do we know specifically which guns yet, Matt? No. No. Let's see. Okay. So we can't get specifics yet. So What's that? Pistol, it's going to be three firearms. It's going to be a pistol, a rifle, and a shotgun. And they're all going to be Keltec. And we don't know Correct. which one yet specifically. But you can well, imagine. I mean, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming. We're still finalizing everything. Plus, we've got a lot of our friends of the show and sponsors that are taking part. Uh there's going to be some weapon lights included. There's going to be some ear pro, some eye pro. There's going to be magazines. There's going to be holsters or a holster for the pistol, as you can imagine. Uh, what else is there going to be? Maybe some optics. Maybe some optics for those three guns. Going to be included. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
And um, not you have to wait and see. Yeah, not yeah. Well, if your optics doesn't work out, I got another one. So that's well, why. No, it's not that. Okay, it's that you don't want to give too much of this away. We're, I mean, we're giving it all. Give it all away, we're going to give it all away. Right. Now. We're going to give it all away, but we're not giving specifics on what it is yet because we're still finalizing everything. And then Correct. I'm going to be making a trip down to Cocoa Beach, and that's when we're going to release it. We're going to do a – Yes, that's going to be – that'll be a fun episode. We're going to do the, the show cool. from down in Cocoa Beach, going to get a tour of the factory, and uh, we're also going to do another big reveal, and this, this all ties in with the giveaway. So – that's the yep. big. That's the big teaser announcement, I guess. It's 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 still not official yet, but it's it's in the works. It's to, happening to come soon. A lot of cool stuff in there. Within the next month, we will have everything finalized. Uh, you got your buddy there with you? you got Chuck, Chuck Norris. Norris is, he's always here. Yep. Nice. Good old Chuck. Yep. So. There you go, Leadheads. That's that's coming up, so don't be so sad that you didn't make an RA. But you should be because we had a good time. And uh, that was an awesome giveaway with the P-17, the red dot, the Crimson Trace red dot, the holster, the Kraken case, which that case is called the Gamma. That's their pistol size case. Got one right here, too, with your hat in it right there. There's a, there's a Gamma nice. case. And uh, yeah. the extra mags and the flashlight. So May 10th, you're going to find out. Watch your email from Caltech. And, oh, by the way, we're going to be doing a newsletter coming up. I'm going to start a newsletter on Talking Lead's website. I've never done one in the past. Uh, just show announcements whenever a new show is released. Uh, but we're going to start doing a newsletter. So that's coming up. Working with your good buddies there at Black Tie. Nice in uh, Cocoa Beach. They're oh, yeah. gonna be they're gonna be a part of this big giveaway that we're doing too. So Scott, let's go. Yeah, let's go back to the giveaway real quick. Uh, just so listeners understand uh, how this works is um, once we do select a winner, um, or pick a winner, I should say, um, we will. Um, if you're not local, you know to to Cocoa, Florida, um, or Florida resident, um, we will be shipping that to your nearest FFL for you, for the transfer for you to pick those firearms up. So that's how that works. We don't ship it straight to your house, obviously. And I know that uh, most people listening to the show know that, but I just have to say that just so, uh, you know, in case yeah, you have to be legal there, and, and all of our giveaways that inf involve firearms, you have to legally be able to own a firearm. And, Correct. and the way we ensure that is we ship it to an FFL. And mm -hmm. your FFL does the background checks and all that, and they'll find out whether you can have one or not. So it's best just to be honest and say, hey, you know, don't send that because I can't have it. And you obviously have to be of age in your state. So Yeah. And even if you're in Florida, you're still going to send it to an FFL. We are? They have to go okay. to an FFL. Yes. Well, we do transfers here too. So I don't well, know if that works. Are you but. an FFL? Of course we well, are. Well, there you go. So you still have to yeah. do the FFL. <laughs> You're not shipping it to their... Uh, we are going to ship it from the manufacturing office to... <laughs> to an FFL. Or if you're in Florida close enough, then they can come by Caltech and you will do the yeah. transfer yourself. We'll we'll definitely do that for them. Absolutely. There you go. Yeah, if you're close by the factory. And they yeah. won't charge you the, the uh, transfer fee other than the $10 background check, right? Correct. Since we're throwing disclaimers out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it ten bucks now? I thought it was five bucks. Uh the last one I did was ten. Interesting. 10 huh. For the yeah, background check. I don't know. It's always been ten. Has it? Yeah. I think it yeah. is. I think it's still ten. I don't think they I, lowered I it. Why would they lower it? <laughs> that, yeah, right. They would never do that. Um I I don't know. For some reason, I, maybe I only owed the office over here. Like, maybe they owed me five bucks or something. I don't know, but I, I know I paid five dollars for one one time. But it could have been a mistake. Yeah, maybe somebody I, covered. I might know. I might owe Tammy, our our admin over there, five bucks. I don't even know. <laughs> there you go, Tammy. Chad owes you a sandwich. <laughs> she uh, she shorted you. I'll fix it, Chad. Yeah, they're like that's why that's. 
we've been short five dollars like eight years <laughs> yes <laughs> i think you're covered so yeah. so guys i appreciate you taking the time to be on and uh, doing the pre-show with us and of course as always being sponsored of the show making this possible for our lead heads each and every each and every week sometimes more um but you know, when we were there and and at and at um shot show I call NRA shot show sometimes, and when I say shot show, I have to correct myself, but I mean shot show this time. Shot show and NRA, uh, you guys had the big release of you know the 410 KSG and the the R50. Talk correct. about talk That's about right. those real quick. Well, what R50. Uh, what do you want to do? What do you want to know, Marty? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, it's f so for our listeners who aren't familiar with those yet, I mean, we've been talking about them just about every show uh, since um, Shot Show. But the 410 KSG, the first 410 bullpup uh, on the market. You guys, uh, very innovative company. You know, we, we talk about that. You've always got new and exciting products that you're you're dropping and releasing. Uh, tell us more about the the 410. Yeah, Chad, you want to talk about the guns, and I'll let everybody know about ship dates and and how I'm getting them out there to you. Sure, yeah, so the 410, um, like I said, we released that SHOT Show. Um, it's a uh, it's a KSG, not a KS7, uh, but it's the size, in fact, it might be a little bit smaller than a KS7. It is, yeah. Yeah, as far as width and weight. So um, it's an excellent uh, pump action uh, intro to tactical shooting uh, shotgun and, uh, to you know just run environment patrol uh just going to the range and plinking with your family having a good time and uh what's that i was just saying i need one to put up here uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the, for those of you listening he's pointing at his uh his wall of guns and he's mouthing to me he needs one for his wall we'll get you one uh but yeah it's a it's a great little um uh, pump action 410 option. In fact, it's it's the only bullpup uh, 410 option. Um, but it is a KSG, so it's got the selector. It's got two tubes and a selector. Um, so you can put different ammos on different sides if you want, or you can just fill the thing up with the same stuff. Um, but it does have the um, the carry handle of the KS7. So it comes right out of the box of the siding system, which is pretty awesome. And you can take that carry handle off just like you can with the 410 or the, sorry, the uh, KS7, and put the rail on there if you want to run a red dot or something like that, um, and use it, you know, in a home defense situation or scenario. Um, y there's always that option too. So people are gonna do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, it's a super fun, very low recoil um, pump action bullpup 410 shotgun. It's a, it's a, it's a great, um, it's a lot of fun. And it's um, great for, for the smaller framed individual too. So children. Uh, you know, the, Absolutely. the smaller women that may be afraid to, to get into the shotguns because, you know, 12 gauge, you know, let's be honest, you know, it's got a lot of damn kick. There's, there's not a lot you can do to mitigate a, a 12 gauge, uh, but Correct. great but, for yeah, skeet the, shooting, bird hunting. Yeah. So for anybody that hasn't had any 410 experience, um, the, uh, the KSG 410, uh, shoots very similar to, um, like a nine millimeter carbine. Um, uh, like maybe this, like the sub two thousand, or if anybody has any experience shooting nine exactly millimeter crystal like caliber the carbine, yes, yeah, it's very very soft recoil. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Um, and then the uh, other gun you mentioned was the R fifty, which is the big brother um, to the P fifty. So it's the exact same platform, only it has a sixteen inch barrel, same rifling. Um, it's it's got a, a threaded. It's a threaded 16-inch barrel, but it also has a side-folding stock that's ambi, so it's uh, it folds from either side of the gun. Uh, in fact, the the gun is completely ambi as well. Um, so it's uh, it's a good time. Um, I know a lot of guys. You know, we've, we've talked about the um, the pistol brace um, fiasco that's been going on. Yeah. Uh, this is sort of a, it's an answer to that. I mean, you're not getting the short barrel, but um, with that longer barrel, you're obviously getting much better ballistics anyway. Um, but it does fold up into a really short package. Uh, so, yeah, the R50, big brother to the P50. Same magazine, same platform, same everything. Just has a, a dual folding stock and a 16-inch threaded barrel. Very nice. And then 
Uh, on top of that, you know, we, you guys were running this during NRA and I think it was expiring maybe next month, but you've got a hundred dollar rebate that you've been offering on your sub two thousands. Parker, you want to talk about what you guys are going to be doing with that? Yeah. So on, on March 1st, we rolled out a hundred dollar consumer facing rebate, excuse me, on all new sub two thousands, except for our CQB, uh, variant. And that was slated to go through and expire on June 30th. But uh, just because of all the excitement and the success of what's going on and, and how many people are wanting subs right now, um, I made the decision with the executive team and we're going to extend that. And by the way, Marty, you're the first one to have really know this. So this is uh, the distributors. Led found out the other day, Matt. That's right. Matt is getting me the, the creative we're about to send out to everybody. But uh, to make the announcement, we're going to go through and extend the rebate till March 1st of 2024. Nice. So you're going to be able to have plenty of time. If you want to get a sub 2000, you can go through and get it. So uh, we're nice. thrilled about it. Um, I know everybody's been super excited. So, But like I said, all new subs except for the CQB. Uh, you can go through and uh, once you submit it, it takes about six to 10 weeks and you get a hundred dollar check in the mail. Very nice. And that's going to go till next March year, 1st of 2024. Yeah. So there you go. So if you've not got your mother's day present yet, this is the perfect gift for your mother. A sub 2000 <laughs> or, a, or, a, or a KSG 410, but the sub 2000, you're getting a hundred dollar rebate and that's, um, any any firearms uh, dealer that they go through, they can they can go to your website and then sign up for the hundred dollar yep. rebate and then get that hundred dollar rebate. Very cool. Yeah, right now, main part of the website, click on it, submit the form. You'll need some information that when you check out from your dealer, um, that you'll have you know serial number and some SKU information and you know contact info uh, to verify and then. You're ready to rock and roll. I know when I was it's, at the booth, uh, you know, mingling with, uh, you know, the people that were there looking at your guns and stuff, sometimes they would mistake me for one of you guys and they would come and start asking me questions about stuff. And, uh, I mean, nine, nine out of the 10 people that came up to me, they were, they were asking about the sub 2000. They're like, well, you know, I want to see your sub 2000. Where's your sub 2000s? Of course, you know, I'd walk them over there to the wall and then I would grab one of you guys and, <laughs> And say, hey, <laughs> help them out. But, uh, yeah, very popular. Uh, I, you know, I know a lot of the frustration, I guess, is is with finding the sub-2000s. And you know, we've addressed this on some prior episodes, yeah. Chad. You've talked about, you know, the distributors and, you know, things like that. How's it looking as far as supply goes? So, if, you know, I want to go out and get one of these. And I want to use that $100 rebate. What are my odds? I would say pretty pretty darn good, and since I've extended the rebate on there, it's going to give give you a lot more runway to be able to get one. Um, I mean, I've got production right now, just hammering subs to get them out the door. Um, you know, I would say sub two thousands, P seventeens, those two models right now are just they're flying out out the door. So um, to get a sub, you'll be able to go through and get a sub and find one, and now you got plenty of time to do it too. Very yeah. nice. And for any, anybody looking for something else, another, a different Caltech weapon, yes, we are making those as well. We're just uh, <laughs> yeah, we're just really hammer, hammering on the uh, sub two thousand P seventeens right now because of the demand. Uh, but yes, we are making yeah. P fifteens. They are shipping RDDs. You know, so. Yeah. Yep. KSG twelves. Yep. KS, KSGs are going out. Um, to go back to earlier on the four ten. Uh, I start shipping those right around September, November of this year to our distribution network. Um, so that's going to be, you know, kind of a mid late fall going into holiday season. Um, so that'll be coming R 50 that those are starting to go out the door. Um, nice. so we've been right on target on that from announcing it with everybody there at shot show. Um, also I, I chat, I forgot, uh, to mention if you've got a, uh, if you've got a P 50, and you would like to convert it to an R50, we have that program available. Um, you can actually send it in to us. It's 150 bucks, and we will take your P50 and turn it into an R50. Now, remember, awesome. we, can't, 
we can't go the other way. Um, if you have an R50, you want to go to a pistol, to a P50, we can't go through and legally do that. Um, but if you would like to convert your P50 into an R50, that program is available. Just reach out to our customer service and uh, we'll get rocking and rolling on it. But that's cool. Yeah, yeah. We're excited to get all the, the new products out. Yeah. So the pistol, the pistol can go to a carbine. The carbine cannot go to a pistol. Just so make, we're very yeah. clear on that. Is yeah. that available? So don't, yeah. Is that available yeah, now? Don't send, us yeah. your, uh, don't send us your carbines expecting us to cut the barrel down for you. So. And I got to have it. No, that won't happen. No. I mean, we'll cut it, but we'll keep it. You know, so <laughs> you don't <wanna> do that. <laughs> it's ours at that point. You don't get it back. Yeah. So, so they go to your website if they want this? What's that? Do they uh, go to your website? Yeah, they go the to the service? website, go to contact us, reach out to our customer service department, and then we'll go through and our team over there will get that process rolling. So okay. we rolled that program out. I think it was, I think NRA, I made the announcement to go through and start doing that. Cause I just, we had a lot of people, Chad would see him, Matt would see him. We would see him online. Just people saying, Hey, I've got a P50, you know, I got to go, you know, buy another SKU if I want to have one. I was like, Hey, let's just do a conversion kit. Yeah. Um, so that's what you can send it in and we'll take care of it for you for hundred people. I know bucks. we talked about it on a prior episode. I don't remember which one it was, but I know that we have talked about it. Um, but yeah, that that's awesome that you guys are able to do that, or just buy one of each, and then have have one of each. Uh, why not? That's right. <laughs> that's what we recommend. You know, take that hundred and fifty dollars and just put it towards the the R fifty. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Oh, but um, and then your four ten, Marty. I don't know. Did you? So four ten. I uh, I think I forgot to uh, mention as well is is right at four ninety five MSRP on that gun. Yeah. So uh, we did a we did yep. a video with Hammer at uh, NRA and we were talking about that and uh, I, of course I made the smart ass remark. He's like, why not charge four ten for a four ten? <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, and Hammer's like, maybe a promo to come. <laughs> I think maybe a promo to come. So the engineer, our engineer Ryan Williams, who's uh, uh, the product project manager on that four ten. Um, I think he actually, we joked around about that in the very beginning um, when he decided to do this gun. And I think he actually tried <laughs> to get it at 410. <laughs> tried to make it a $410 gun. Um, that would be awesome. But uh, yeah, just, you know, with manufacturing processes and materials and all that stuff, it, we just, it wasn't possible. So, but yeah, we did think about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got as close as I could, Marty. There you I got go. As close as I could. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciate that. Uh, now with the, uh, I, I was a question I wanted to ask, ask on the sub 2000. Of course you got different variants of the sub 2000. Uh, you've got the nine, you're still doing the forties also on the sub 2000. Yes, sir. And Correct. of course you've got the different, uh, magazine compatibilities with, um, the Glock well, obviously being probably the, the most desired, I guess. And then Smith and Wesson. And then you've got some multi mag adapters. Talk about those real quick too. A lot of people aren't familiar yes, with that. So the, the Glock. Uh, the Glock variants are proprietary. Um, we can't make a multi-mag variant of the Glock one, so it's Glock and then the multi-mag. And the multi-mag one is uh, the one where you can switch out your um, uh, your magazine catch to fit your uh, particular carry pistol. Or if you've got a bunch of a certain magazine and you want to switch to that magazine catch, um, you can just go grab those on our website. They're they're fairly inexpensive. And it's very easy to do. It's something you could do at home. So that's, that's something you guys sell, yep. that uh, adapter on your website under your, in your pro shop, under your accessories. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So there you go. Correct. There's, so for the, the lead heads out there, you know, we've got the discount code lead head, you get 15% off, uh, when you go to Caltech's pro shop. So that, that would, uh, that applies. You could use that for that. There you go. It's a, uh, it's a great idea because uh, I don't know for anybody that's maybe a new gun owner or the, you know, they've owned handguns for a couple of years, uh, as you know, like, you're going to want to change. You're going to want to change your carry gun. You're going to change your, your plinking guns. You're going to end up with some sort of a collection, you know, maybe four or five pistols, some people, you know, 20 plus pistols. So it's pretty nice. Um, you grab a mag catch. And so whatever gun you think is hot in, it, in your safe at the time, you switch to that mag catch and, and you've got a compatibility um, for both of them. That's why we did that. Keep in mind too, you've got a couple of, um, on a little bit of a separate note, some of the restricted states, you know, we have a couple options that are out there, whether it's uh, California versions of the stuff. Uh, there's a couple of them in Northeast states that we've done for some distributors, some 
some, you know, threadless barrels and that kind of thing. So those are out there that do qualify as well for the rebate and, um, you know, a lot of different variants floating around. And I'm on your website now and I want to, uh, I want to pull that adapter up. Uh, so where would I find that? Go, yeah, go under, uh, oh, you're already in accessories. Uh-huh. Yeah, just scroll through. Just I'm, keep scrolling through and you'll see all the uh, different mag catches. I'm on the uh, sub 2000 accessories. There's two, three, there's seven of them right there. Uh, oh, here we go. Yep. Okay, here they are right here. So, yeah. Um, MP, P320, SIG 226. SIG. Um, got Smith Wesson 59, TP9. Uh, that's Canic. So yeah, several yeah. different options there. Uh, for, there's a for anybody asking the the multi mag variant CG. ships. I believe ships has an M and P. Correct, Parker. Correct. Yeah. So they ship out as an M and P, and then um, if you don't have an M and P, then obviously you can go uh, grab one of these mag catches here. Yeah, and they're like they're like fourteen yep. bucks. Yeah, very very yeah. inexpensive. And then you use that discount code, you get fifteen percent off that. So there you go. That's awesome. And it's, they're, I like, I can't reiterate enough. Like they're very easy to install. Yeah. It looks like just a couple of screws and you're ready to go. Yeah. Well, Loctite, a couple of screws, you're good to go. Yeah. Very cool. So <clears throat> guys, go check out Caltech, go to their website, uh, use that discount code, leadhead, 15% off anything there in their pro shop. Of course, firearms aren't included in that. You don't even sell firearms on your website. So. <laughs> You gotta go through a distributor to do that, and don't try to go to a distributor and say, "Hey, I've got this lead head, lead head discount code. I want to use them when I'm buying my RDB." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll get some sense. interesting phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, that dis- the that discount, <laughs> like, discount is good for apparel and accessories only, no firearms. And and speaking of dealers, don't you guys have some sort of dealer program going on now? Talk about that. Yeah, so we've got a, a Halo network um, where we have quite a few dealers across the country. And if you go onto the bottom part of our website, it'll actually go through a halo section. You can pull up and see the map. And those dealers partner with us directly for military first responders, active duty veterans. Um, and they've actually got some special pricing and programs with us directly to be able to support those individuals and to thank them for their service uh, by getting some pretty cool deals and direct access on Caltech. Very cool. And uh, if you're so, a dealer and cool program. they want to be part of that, they just uh, get in touch with you through their dealer network there? Yeah. So and if you do want to be a part of that, just reach out to their customer service. You'll actually it'll kick it over to me, um, and I'll go through and follow up with you. I'm actually getting right now, Matt and I are working on a way to where you can submit that directly to us. But that's the process right now is just reach out to customer service and emails. Very cool. Mr. Chuck Norris. Join the podcast. There he is. <laughs> he's like, give me some of that. I'm hungry. <laughs> and he's out of here. All right, guys. That uh, wraps up another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. Greatly appreciate uh, Keltech for joining us and uh, hosting us at the NRA. It was an awesome event, and we're looking forward to the next one. Uh, but we still got a lot of this one to crank out. So stay tuned. Be listening. Lots more from the NRA coming up. Uh, in addition to our regular show, so the show that uh, you heard prior to this one, uh, we just had Jack Carr on, the author Jack Carr, and uh, we talked about his uh, new book that's coming out. I think it's the 16th, um, Only the Dead. So that was a great interview. Make sure you go check that out. No spoilers. We didn't do any spoilers. Um, we talked mainly just just gun stuff and movie stuff with him. It was a really good conversation. Had our buddy Brooksy on, uh, co-hosting with me for that interview. So make sure you go back, check that episode out. You're really going to enjoy it. Uh, And then uh, for you readers, uh, another book that's out is The Four Pillars of Fighting from the late James Yeager, our good friend, friend of the show. And uh, Professor Paul Markle was uh, instrumental in getting this book out. Uh, James had passed away before... The release of the book and he entrusted our good buddy paul markle in finishing it up and he did a, a fantabulous job uh getting that out so the four pillars for the four pillars of fighting james jaeger that's his latest novel out 
And, of course, our other sponsor is Mission First Tactical. Go to Mission First Tactical. All the stuff we talked about, plus anything else on their website, you can get uh, discounts on. Leadhead, 20% off. Uh, our good buddies at Seal One to clean all your firearms, keep them lubed, ready to go, protected from corrosion. Seal One, Seal One and Done. Go to their website, SealOne.com. Leadhead, 25% off. And they've also got their uh, rod kits out available they're cleaning rod kits for pistols and rifles that's new those are available and the discount code does work on that as well uh, factory 47 for our ak corner logo to apparel go to factory 47 use the code leadhead 10 percent off defiant munitions for high quality ammo uh, and oh by the way maybe they're going to be a part of the giveaway too that we just talked about i don't know could be some ammo in there from defiant munitions all caps leadhead 10 percent off for your medical supplies, go to Medicine in Bad Places. You want to build your own medical kit, your um, uh, blowout kit, you can go to Medicine in Bad Places, or they have already built out med kits for your car, for your home, for whatever the the uh, reason that you, you need one. You need one everywhere. So when you go camping, you go hiking, you go on vacations, uh, just <coughs> EDC, Medicine in Bad Places, Leadhead 20, you're going to get 20% off in medicine in bad places. And it might just be Leadhead. Uh, so it's either Leadhead or Leadhead 20 because I jacked him up on a post that I did and he changed it. So either one of those should work. Uh, and then, of course, you're talking about my wall back here, wall of guns, Chad. Uh, I've got those all displayed nicely on a lockdown. These are called their secure walls and very easy to install. And it's like a peg system, but they're pegs aren't like those that just lock in, you know, just that hook in. These actually lock into place and are solid. And they've got all kinds of different um, attachments. They've got shelves. They've got the pegs. They've got specialized, like, hat holders, gear holders for your uh, your vest. Go to lockdown. Use the code LEADHEAD. Get 15% off there. And then, of course, the Kraken cases we've been talking about uh, with that awesome memory foam with the Icarus, the Gamma, or the Sigma. You can use the code Talking Lead. They had to be different, and uh, you get ten percent off at uh, Kraken Cases. Or enter our contest, and you might be able to win one. <laughs> so, guys, nice. Chad, Parker, nice. Matt, Chuck Norris, thank you guys for taking the time to be on today. And uh, you got any parting words for the Leadheads? Man, thank you guys. This is the first one, Marty. We broke awesome. you in, Thank broke you. you in pretty good. We took it easy on you. We That's didn't, we didn't do the jack wagon train. Uh, we'll have to have him on when we do the jack wagon train next time. We'll get him next time. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. No, thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for listening. So there you go, leadheads. That does it for this episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. And until the next one, as always, keep your loved ones close and keep your Caltechs closer. <laughs> Keep your firearms closer and your sub-2000 rebate even closer than that. <laughs> <laughs> Until March 1st, 2024. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>